Okay, uh, welcome to the November 21st Lions Bay Council meeting. And uh, we have a quorum present, so I'll act as chair and we'll call a meeting to order. Uh, do we have a motion to call a meeting to order? So moved. Okay. Do we require a motion to call a meeting to order? No. No. Thank you. Thank you. No second for it. <laughs> and then second. All right. Move. Uh, sorry, I got. Uh, uh, we'll move right into the uh, uh, closure of the meeting, subject to A, legal, B, labor, and section 91 A, C, B, G, I, K, and M, and N. Okay. Do we have a motion to move into closed? Moved. Uh, second. True. Sure. Okay. All in favor? Could I speak to that, to that motion? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, it is a motion, so I, I, I would be able to speak to it. Is that correct? Okay. Um, I have some concern about um, item 6B1 in, in closed, and um, I would be very uncomfortable proceeding with, with the closed with that, with that uh, item in there. Um, I don't believe that it's consistent with the community charter, and I, and I don't think it falls under section one. Uh, and section N, I should say, uh, in terms of legal or labor. Um, I, I applaud um, councillors for putting the ethics commissioner motion on, on open, 10C, 10C4, but I was stunned when I, when I finished the open agenda, looked at the closed agenda and found an item which I didn't believe should be there, which appeared to be, um, if I could just read this paragraph quickly, can I, can I make a yeah. suggestion? Sure. The reason for clause N, 91N, is so that you're going to close the debate whether something should or should not be enclosed. That's the place to have the discussion. I've said this many times. Okay, what I'm having okay. um, some difficulty with, though, is that we end up with items in close, right. which we then are unable to take out of close, which I don't believe should be enclosed in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was very challenging. I'm, and I think completely considered, perhaps when this, when the debate or discussion comes up about the ethics component, that would be an appropriate place to discuss. But um, what, what uh, my concern at this point is that I, I would not be prepared to be involved in, in a discussion of an item, which I don't believe, which I believe is contrary to the community charter being there. So what I'm suggesting is, is that I will, Leave, the, leave chambers during that discussion. Okay. And when this discussion is complete, I can be notified and I'll return. Okay. Um, can we ask corporate officer, does, does that item uh, justify being closed? Well, here, here's what I would say in response. <laughs> Moving into closed is simply based on whether, a question of whether or not there are matters that warrant discussion closed. The answer is yes, there are matters warranting discussion and closed. You move into closed, you have nothing to discuss until you adopt an agenda. So if there are matters on the agenda that are a concern that you wish to be in open, then you, you, the motion, it can be made to remove an item from the agenda into open. And then it's voted on. If it's a successful vote, then it's not included in the agenda. If it fails, then it's included in the agenda. So debating the topic is should happen during the adoption of the agenda for closed. Uh, just a quick question. As you understand that. Should that uh, closed item be screened prior? It, it, it has to uh, qualify for a specific section, does it not? It does. Okay. Uh, Councillor Reuter, that was your uh, motion, I believe, or resolution. Sorry, we're just, we're still in open. Okay. So my recommendation is to make a decision on the move there's if they it's been a mover and a seconder to go into closed my recommendation is to go into closed and have this discussion in closed that sounds like a good suggestion do we it, we're not allowed to ask on this item that councillor uh broughton is concerned about uh what section that might apply to close absolutely you can ask that okay well councillor Ryder, can you please tell us what section what uh, that item that you're yes happy to answer that question yes. i would suggest we follow our corporate officer's advice move into closed and have the discussion there okay so you're not prepared to tell us what section i'm prepared okay. to follow our corporate officer's advice 
Okay. Any other comments? Well, just uh, fair notice that, that, that I may have to leave chambers during that discussion. Um, not, not of whether it stays in close, but the actual discussion of the matter. So fair enough. Okay. Uh, all in favor of moving in closed? Aye. Yes. Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Uh, we stop the recording now. Okay, welcome back to the November 21st council meeting. Uh, the time is 7.03. We'll call the meeting to order. And there is uh, item number three, uh, the nothing to report out of closed at this time. We'll reconvene. Uh, we took a recess and closed and we'll reconvene later in the evening. Uh, so item number four, the adoption of the agenda. Do I, any amendments to the agenda? Yes, I do. Um, item, committee meeting item B, uh, the one from me for the verbal report. Do write the number down. Um, NB1. Infrastructure 10B1. Yeah, it was not meant to be a verbal report. That was a placeholder in case somebody came out of the meeting. It was after the agenda. And I've discussed it, Ross, and we've changed another email today. We don't need anything on that matter, Council Craig. So that's being struck. I'm just checking we don't need anything. No, no not that I'm aware of. Okay. That's this point. It's a library thing. We don't need anything. Okay, okay. that's so we can strike that. I just struck that because I saw the verbal and I. Uh, we I know. Place all the not verbal because it was. Yeah. The meeting was after that. Okay, any other items? Um, yeah, I've got one other one. I would also like to strike. Um, Item five in the second section, and uh, council that council Broughton's um, five, yeah. sorry, yeah. five, no, sorry, five is public participation. Ten C five and C five under the same section, which is Councillor Broughton's um, resolution. I believe this is the same thing we've discussed in the last two meetings under a different guise, and keeps coming back. I'd like to strike that. Sorry, which uh, okay. is that? 10 C5. Five. 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 At the bottom of the page. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, Councilor Brown? Sorry, should we uh, hear any other possible amendments before we move into discussion? That's fine. Sure. Is that it? I don't have any more. I just have two. I have nothing further to amend. Okay, um, motion to. I have a just a couple no. under new business or a business arising. Um, disrespect to public participation from this special meeting of the 21st, with in regards to, I guess I don't need to talk about what it is until we get ready. And you just have to name the topic. The topic, the public, public participation. Um, questions asked during the special council meeting. Yeah. And sorry, what's it pertaining to? I can you be it was um, specific? It was former Councillor Bain's question in regards to preparation for disaster in the watershed. And I believe that uh, Peter or the Mr. Fulkerson, Phil Fulkerson, had addressed this <laughs> prior that there was meeting with different levels of government and Vancouver Coastal in order to discuss a plan for our emergency evacuation. The, the question is in the minutes that Councillor Vane asked. And then I suppose we're going to be discussing things under the beach park. And um, so I can talk about that then. And then the question, do we, is Carl going to be here today? joining us no. this evening? I think he might be online possibly, but. Maybe a little for maybe not. Okay, I'll leave it for that until he's available. Okay, uh, motion to accept uh, the agenda with the amendments. Uh, move, no, I'd like I can't to the motion. Yeah, we'll call, uh, we'll. We need a motion. We need a motion, then you can speak to it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I believe. Need a motion. Okay, Excuse second. Me. Okay, Councilor Broughton. Okay, uh, uh, item 10C5 is a motion we're asking the CAO to review council resolutions that were made during his absence to ensure 
that they um, are consistent with our, our uh, other bylaws and our policies. And um, the, the, the motion itself has, has uh, built in information with regard to what the problem is here. The fact is, is that, is that uh, motions have been passed which contravene the existing policy. And in, interestingly, the existing policy uh, were not available on the website. So it just creates a whole situation here where I, I would like to request that the CAO review the resolutions that were passed prior to his assuming the role of, of corporate officer. Specifically, it was when we were either did not have a corporate officer or um, the corporate officer was, was off-site. And um, I'm, I'm asking that he review them. And I don't think that that's controversial or, or whatever. I think it's... it's uh, that's uh, very responsible, in fact. So, okay, Councillor Ryder. Yeah, in the interest of getting our meeting moving, I um, I would just say, um, uh, I mean, I, I could respond to this, but I'm going to not respond to that. I I'm I'm ready to uh, call the question. Okay, Councillor Abbott. Um, yeah, I could call ready to call the question. Just one one point I need to make to what Michael said. Council have every right to. Um, direct people to do something outside of the bylaw. They have a right to do that. Council direct staff, not vice versa. Um, this is about the same policy uh, decision council took um, that you've brought to the table two, three times, Michael. So I'm ready to. Okay, Councilor Conlove. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I have no problem with uh, of our CAO reviewing uh, past uh, policies and procedures. And I know that. Uh, uh, it it, uh, it helps if you put forward the best practices and you you highlight those because I think uh, we've had challenges uh, trying to fulfill those best practices and policy. So I I agree with Councillor Broughton. I think this should remain on the agenda. So any other comments before we call the question? Well, I guess almost everybody's had something to say. I just think that this is probably not the best use of Ross's time at this time. And if there's something that comes up, I think in an ad hoc scenario, we could ask Ross to review policies. But I, I don't think that that's a good use of his time to ask him to go back and look at every policy that's been passed at the council table. So I, I would support removing it. Councillor Broughton, are we speaking twice now? Uh, Councillor Broughton uh, had his hand up. Mm -hmm. Councillor Broughton? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a limited number of policies, so I don't think it would be onerous, but that's fine. Okay, Councillor Ryder? To the Council's wisdom. I'm, I'm ready to vote. Okay, we'll call a question. Can we be clear on what the question is? Everyone knows what they're voting for. We're voting for the amendments. Okay. Call the question. All in favor of the amendments? Yes. Yes. Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Opposed. Uh, see if I can record mine as well. May I okay. Uh, a statement about the. Can we just maybe agree that any opposition is recorded? So Marina's not asking us every single time whether we want it recorded or not. Or, or we could just say, I want excuse my vote recorded. Me. Uh, Mr. Blackwell. Uh, do we have to specifically say whether we would like our opposition? Because I know this is flipped and flopped back and forth, but depending on what the subject was. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So through you, the, the best way I would suggest is if you wish, you can be opposed. If you want to be recorded as being opposed, just advise the chair accordingly that you wish to be recorded. Yeah. Because there is a clear differentiation between being opposed and being wanting to go on record. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Councillor Broughton as opposed as a okay. MI. Okay. Uh, we'll move to public participation. Anyone? Ambiz? Good evening. First of all, I have to say thank you so much. All of you have a rainy time. You are here and you can see fun for the uh, better lions. Uh, thank you to the mayor that he said the we are one year report about that, what he has done. It was a great writing, everything, and it was in the year. And thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. 
When I received that paper, I find out that, oh, it's one year that you are here. And it's one year that I'm coming here for one purpose, but still nothing has been done. But uh, uh, as she said, it takes four to six weeks that actually we are, we are close to the eight weeks right now. And I'm, I'm, I have enough confidence that we are going to have a, <clears throat> yeah, we will um, come up with the right decision and lead the collaboration together. Thank you so much. Uh, please just uh, follow up with the uh, party law committee and uh, in the society of the uh, <clears throat> democracy. Just uh, this is a great thing if you have done enough to do it, that it goes the you know better for for us that have a better life and in peace. Thank you so much. That's it. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, any others in the gallery that would like to speak? Okay, any online, Marina? No, okay, with that we'll move, uh, there's no 10 minute delegations? Yeah. Okay, with that we'll move to uh, item number seven, approval of the minutes. Uh, do we have a motion to approve September 21st, 2023? Moved. Second. Okay, discussion, amendments? Um, I have one. Um, on page six, um, it's, once again goes to about it, how it's how it's recorded. Um, it says council elected was opposed, and I understand what abstention means, but I asked it. I just recorded that I abstained, um, and just a reminder: the reason I abstained is because I couldn't vote for something that said that the trails be open to hikers. We never close the trails; we close the parking. Okay, sorry. So I'd like that recorded, isn't it? State. I think we reviewed this. Do we record it as abstaining or, or not? Yeah, thank you. So through you, uh, as Councillor Abbott correctly pointed out, abstention is a vote in favor. Uh, in terms of the accuracy of the minutes, I need to get some legal advice with regard to whether we have the legal latitude to record something that's not, that has no legal standing. There's no such thing as a stem. Uh, uh, okay. So if you want that, I would have to make sure we can do it. So in the future, if there's something that's written in acting the resolution, but I should then recuse myself and not abstain. Is that what you're saying? I don't know how to do it. I can. Why don't we get legal advice and then you, you yeah. can talk about this offline. Okay. That'd be okay. We are going to have a procedural specialist uh, providing a workshop for us. So could we defer to that? Yeah. So we don't need a legal opinion on it. I have a question. Yeah. On okay. Yeah. Any others? Yes. Uh, Council Ryder. Um, I'm, I'm looking at that moved and seconded and carried. Um, was that the actual motion that was voted on? That the trails be open to hikers and meet them? Yes. Good gracious. I wouldn't listen to the agenda. I wouldn't listen to the report. Okay. Any other comments? Well, that was an error, I suppose. Okay. We'll call the question. All in favor with the amendments? What amendments? Yes. Or no amendments, I guess. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Carried. Okay, November 7th, 2023. Uh, do we have a motion to accept those Move. minutes? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, amendments? Discussion? None for me. Um, okay, yeah, I'll call a question. Yeah. Um, just... Just a second. I'm sorry. Under sorry. Second. And I'm going to pull a three-second rule here, according to our CAO. So it's a small matter. Uh, right. I'll call the question. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, minutes to November 9th, 2023. Do we have a motion to approve? Moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any amendments? I was not present for that meeting, so I will recuse myself from. Okay. The any any amendments? Okay. I'll call the question. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, business arising from minutes, uh, and I believe Councillor Cunliffe. Yeah, that would have been the question that. <laughs> 
Fred Bain had asked in regards to the procedure in place to formally, if we do choose to close Major again. Robinson. Sorry. Where did that go? That would have been in the first set of minutes of the 21st, uh, page six of 102. So Fred Bain commented about having process in place to deal with emergency situations such as this trail closure. So I just want to pose to staff or it was Phil Fulkerson who had commented at one of the meetings that we, when we initially chose, I believe, to close the parking, that there was the levels different levels of government that would meet with us that I believe he said sometime in October they were planning on doing so. But in order to put a pro, like a process together, so we have criteria, checks and balances that so to remove that decision from council and put it entirely in the hands of staff. So this is all new to you, Ross. Yep. Um, maybe we can follow up with Phil in regards to that, but because from his consultation with other communities, and they all said that this should not ever have been a council decision, and I believe we all feel the same way. So maybe add that to the action list when we get there, because inevitably we are going to find ourselves in a similar situation in the future. Okay. Uh, what are you What are you calling for on this? That you just want to make? Uh, I'd like that to attention. I'd like staff to on the to do list. Yeah. Or can I make a suggestion, Councilor Abbott? We've been asking for an EPC meeting for a while, and in the last meeting we put on the action log to make it Ross to get a hold of all this time because the rest of us have failed. That should be an item for the EPC. We can bring it into that meeting and then bring a recommendation to Council. Sounds good. I think it actually, the, technically, it's supposed to go through the fire chief and then to staff. Yeah. How, however the process goes, that's yeah. fine. That's where we kind of went off track last time is, is council overruled the fire chief, so. No, well, that's yeah. not what occurred. So, yeah. Oh, that's what occurred. The fire chief made a recommendation. We overruled that. Well, the fire chief doesn't make decisions for anyway, the community, though, that's what the elected council is for. So, again, if we have a process no, in I place. Got, we, we better do a research on that because uh, my understanding from Metro and also from the fire chief was that the fire chief instructs staff. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Blackwell, because I think you had actually even told me that this is out of the hands of of, uh, of council. It should be. It's, it shouldn't be a political. Oh, 100%. Decision. That's why... We need to get this process in place. And Bill was the one to speak let's, let's to that. How, the same how this is supposed to occur. So can I clarify, are we asking the EPC to confirm the protocol for... No, the, I think we're asking the EPC to pull the trigger and get the ball rolling so okay. we actually yes. get some traction on this, this topic here. And I think we're asking the CAO to facilitate and, and bring that about. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So be crystal. All right, uh, we'll move to the next item, item number nine, unfinished business. Sorry, I was two minutes Sorry. arising. Oh. Yeah, was there something else? Yeah, two minutes arising. Okay. Um, so the next one was on um, on page, yeah, page, nine, page nine. Um, of page nine of the page. The Greg Weary's presentation. Um, he's come more than once in public participation. He comes with really specific asks. Um, and I think the usual expectation is we should tell him whether he's going to get his ask or not. Um, I, I also think that this is something that might well sit well with the EPC, um, this whole subject of uh, watershed protection. So maybe maybe we, we bring it there to that meeting as well. I think that falls in line with the fire. Does that fall in line with the fire chief's uh, ask from the last meeting? Yeah, I think we approved the fire chief to go out and and uh, uh, seek the funding for the consultant 
That's so that's going to fall, I think, part and parcel. So I think what I'm suggesting is we invite Greg Meary, Meary to the PC meeting, give him a chance to talk at that committee about the sentence when it's That's going into what we're going to invite him. Yeah. Rather than if he gets the man get some response. Yeah, no issue. I think he's, yeah. he's normally attends those meetings, so that's good. Yeah. Okay, any other items there? Yeah, I've got one other matter arising. Um, just above that, this is the resolution on the Lansbury Beach Park. Um, which one? The lines of the resolution on the line of the beach ball. Page nine. Page nine. Six A. Yes. Six A. Um, I think we need to we need to certainly get some action on the North Bog um, about how this is going to come about. I have one hundred percent supportive of this. Uh, I have grave concerns if we don't keep a focus on it. We are not going to meet the goals that were set out here, specifically um, of getting this done by Canada Day. Um, and I just want to ask the CAO, um, was this now firmly in your thought? Do you see a, a path to this, or can you give us any further updates? And I think we should get an update regularly on this, or it's going to be, going to be something that, in my opinion, has a, a very large risk of, of not being achieved. On the timeline, you certainly don't want it to turn out like the Bayview, Bayview Bridge. I don't know what you mean. Thank you. Um, Curious to Councillor Abbott. I think my recommendation to Council is that you receive regular updates on the progress of the, of the park. Uh, there, it, it, things can go smoothly. There, there's also the potential for things to have hiccups, discover things buried there that you didn't uh, know, which could have implications. So it'd be good to, to stay current. That way the community can hear about the, the detailed progress, uh, the questions and answer with respect to any of the issues that are presenting themselves. With regard to the first part of your question, um, there are a few sort of logistic details that uh, are in the process of being uh, resolved and put to bed so that the process can kick off very shortly. Okay, Councillor uh, Cunliffe or Councillor Broughton, you're on the committee, the Beach Committee. Do you have any comments? Sure. Well, the, the, the committee members uh, presented to the last meeting and gave a significant amount of information. They also provided a report, which was uh, made available um, both to Council and, and uh, ultimately was posted on the website. So there's a significant amount of information out there. Um, council had held a special council meeting on November the 9th and passed us, uh, a number of motions which we were in close and have yet to be released from close, but they were definitely enabling motions to move things forward. Uh, subsequent to that, there was a meeting last week of the uh, CAO, the, CA, the financial officer, and the public works manager, and several of the um, members of the Beach Park Committee and uh, which is which has generated discussion and and movement forward in terms of operationalizing the uh, the, the park. Uh, there will be there was uh, we've met uh, met with uh, the CAO yesterday in this this matter, and uh, there will be a, a, a beach park committee meeting tomorrow night, six a.m. here. P.M. Six p.m. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's the end here uh, to to discuss sort of next steps, but we are very aggressively and actively moving forward, and we'll try to up, we'll update as quickly and as accurately as we possibly can as information comes okay. forward. Okay, great. There's a Council lot of information out there. Councillor Conlon, how are you feeling? Yeah, I was looking forward to tomorrow night to hear how the meeting with the CAO, public works officer, went. So. I know that's uh, always keep it on track. So, yeah. Question? Okay. Uh, Council Ryder. Um, I'm, I'm hearing that something was posted to the website. The what? report that was presented the to the council. report was made available to council and ahead of the, the uh, previous meeting. Council. I see. And that is posted to which website? Village of Lions Bay website. So, that is on the Village of Lions Bay website. Yeah, Councillor Abbott. Do you have anything else connected to yep. the to the well, November the seventh meeting? Councillor Abbott, table at the meeting. 
Right. So, um, thanks. I will attend tomorrow night's meeting um, to get a feel for myself. Um, can I ask that the item that goes on the on the log be that by the next meeting the CAO brings us back um, to report that we have a, a contracting strategy um, that, that sees us get to breaking ground on, on these lines? Can I ask for that? Do that from our motion. Well, no, I just wanted to add an action to the action log. <laughs> the CEO, as you just suggested, reports regularly back to us, and by the next meeting, the report on how we're doing on a contracting strategy. Let me give us a little bit of feedback, the action log. So that this, I can imagine, will start to get longer and longer and, and become difficult, and we've seen that we can't get through our meetings in a fashion. What is your recommendation on how we handle this? So normally when these things are included in council agendas, the intention is not to go through each one and debate it line by line, because that's your entire council meeting. Mm -hmm. What's better is if council has any matter on here that is of significance that, he, that it feels should be discussed in public, in public forum on the council, then bring it up and, and discuss it. But a lot of these, or speak for themselves. Ongoing, there's really nothing to discuss. So that's the distinction I would suggest council can make. And then you're the, frequently this should be no no comment done. Move on to the next item. Every now and then there may be one or two possibilities that get discussed, and that will allow you to dramatically speed things up. Okay. Uh, anything further before we move on? Yeah, I have a one council writer. Yeah, I, I, I think Neville's point about the contractual element in this being uh, something that's very important and that comes forward so that we can achieve the success in the timelines uh, outlined. I think that's an important one, and I would re I'd reiterate that that I'd like to see something on that for the next meeting as well. Okay, there's a meeting tomorrow night and. Uh, I'm sure our CAO will be in discussion here at the Beach Park Committee. Let's say that we're, we're moving forward. We will be reporting the moving forward, and that will include all aspects of, of the projects. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We move to item number item number 10, reports. Um, go to uh, A1 staff, uh, uh, CAO draft corporate communications policy. Uh, Mr. Blackwell. Thank you. Oh, we did skip over that. Uh, yes. Okay. We'll go back to number nine. Apologies. Mm -hmm. uh, this is found on page nine. Page 17. 17. Sorry, I was looking at 9A. Page 284. Uh, okay. Um, there will be a motion coming up uh, later in the meeting uh, with regard to item 284 uh, and the uh, stop signs at the, at the railroad tracks. Oh, so we'll cover that off later. 293 Bayview Bridge. Uh, is Carl online? Mr. Blackwell, anything to add? Uh, not at this point. Okay. Well, other than the, the finer, fine. Finer details are being concluded. We're on the train. Okay. Item 296, uh, the audit annual report, uh, Mr. Blackwell. Uh, I would defer to Mr. Chirkoff on that for the update with regard to the latest, the completion of the outstanding maps that were provided us by video. Yes. Uh, so we provided um, the uh, minutes that they were looking for for closed meeting minutes um, on Monday. Um, and um, on Monday as well, uh, the Finance Committee uh, reviewed, uh, reviewed and adopted the previous minutes that had not been adopted. So uh, we should have everything ready for BDO uh, for them to uh, complete their audit. I spoke with the audit partner. Um, he is not available this week until Monday, next week. Um, but his staff is working on fine tuning or finalizing the audit. Um, I've asked uh, uh, for uh, letters in advance just for review as far as audit completion. Um, and 
what else? Uh, the financial statements have gone through seven revisions. I got the last uh, version of the financial statements uh, last week, medical kind of stuff. Um, so in my opinion, um, as a former auditor, uh, if I get the that level of uh, screening from an audit partner, we're basically done. We just need to complete the process and we should be able to move forward. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, item number 297, cost benefit analysis, document storage. Mr. Blackwell. Uh, that's a work in progress. It's sort of low priority at this point. Okay. Uh, 301, a review of the secondary suites. Uh, Mr. Cherkoff, your name is next to that? 298. Yeah, call the EPCM. Oh, uh, call the EPCM. We've, we've I think we that. discussed that. Yeah. Mr. Blackwell, you'll reach out. Bill Fulkerson. Okay, 301 is review of the secondary suites. Mr. Cherkoff. Secondary suites, um, as far as uh, was reported, um, uh, it's an opt-in model. Uh, people have to self-report that they have a secondary suite and we have five law officers that uh, review uh, places that uh, uh, or they check to see that uh, you know, self-reporting is being done on time uh, or is truthful. But, um, as far as in total secondary suite revenue for the last year, um, well, uh, it may look a little different between the three segments of sewer, water, and solid waste. Uh, the total amount of secondary suite revenue uh, is about $17,000 versus twenty. In the prior year, not significantly different. Um, it is lower, um, and as um, uh, councillors have identified in previous meetings, um, there may be a, a reduction of that because of the exemption for um, family members and firefighters that are in that suite, so they don't have to pay for it. Okay, um, month a uh, uh, monthly budget update. Um, I so if I just go back to that, um, Joe, the ASP was pretty clear on this. We wanted to know how many people use the firefighting exemption. Is that the difference in the second thousand dollars? Can we get the answer, please? Uh, I don't have very many, but that's that question has been for the last few weeks. Just needed to know the number. I think we all understood what happened. Thanks. Okay, uh, Joe, budget update. Anything? Uh, we've got a place marker at 303. It says on a monthly basis. Oh, uh, so that would be um, after the November month end of close. Mm -hmm. uh, so the previous term reported uh, was after this, uh, October had closed. Uh, so on the next council meeting would be the next uh, budget to actually. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, 304, uh, advise province of BC uh, on the request of the exemption of speculation tax. Mr. Blackwell. I've done absolutely zero on that. Okay, Councillor Reuter. Uh, ongoing. Okay, item 305, Tane. Uh, just Councillor Broughton. Speak to that. Um, th there was uh, mentioned that there, uh, the base tax is to encourage more rentals, so is my, that my understanding. And um, I, I think one of the th concerns that I, would, that I was hearing from residents is that, is that there's a number of special circumstances and there seems to be a kind of a blanket uh, levy the, the, of this tax and and I think what what my concern is is that there are a number of residents in the community who who um, historically the ones have been uh, used on you know, parts of the year family based that type of thing and uh, also that we have people who who travel for business and for significant periods of time, and whether or not they may in fact uh, attract the tax. So I, I think, there, to my mind, there needs to be um, some kind of a process involved to, where, where there's a review um, of, of sort of special circumstances. So what I would hope would be that if, if the CEO in his discussions or conveying information to the provincial, is this provincial or federal? Um, anyway, in, in providing information that, that 
uh, there'd be some special circumstances. I think a bureaucracy becomes, um, <clears throat> it just run, runs rampant if it, if it's, if, if there isn't some opportunity for review. So I, I think this, this, I can, happens, this needs to happen. I can provide some writer to that. Yeah, um, certainly the hardship uh, that we anticipate will be experienced by residents uh, will be a part of the case, as I outlined, mm -hmm. that will be made uh, to the uh, to the ministry or the minister. That will certainly be part and parcel of, of the argument. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's black out. Anything further? No. Oh, okay, we'll move on. Uh, item 305 and uh, obtain the LBBT committee file copies. And that's Carl. Carl's not with us online. Well, we, Any other comments? Yes, yes, for those in digital form, and they'll be sent sent to him in terms. Well, he has most of those files. It's the actual uh, minutes uh, that he has not yet received. Okay. Item 306, uh, rain barrels. I'm an action committee. Uh, Monday. Week, to, week, week yesterday, I think, the next meeting. It'll be at the next meeting. Okay, so I'm done. Okay, next item is 307, provide uh, preliminary guidelines on public participation correspondence, response from action item 294. Blackwell. Uh, no, 307 on the second page. Yeah, no, it's, I'm referring to action item yeah. 294 over there. I was looking for it. Um, so these are these are different things. Uh, what I can say is there's a draft communications policy before council tonight for discussion purposes and direction. Uh, there's quite a collection of iterations of communications type policies. So uh, this is a work in progress. Okay. Item 308, confirm dates of the email approved proposed calendar and council is expected to provide confirmation. Uh, this is on the budget process. And Mr. Cherkoff, uh, later in the... It comes up later, yeah. Anything you want to add right now or we'll refer to it later? Okay. 309, purchasing policy. And Mr. Cherkoff. Policy has gone through diverse drafts. Um, it's been circulated to council and in the uh, latest version, version 10, um, has been circulated for um, adoption tonight. It incorporates uh, the comments from uh, councillors uh, Houghton and Abbott. Um, and uh, if there are no further comments, um, that would be the policy that we would adopt. Okay. That's later in the uh, documents as well. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Uh, 310, rescope the connector project. I think that's occurring. Uh, okay. I know Mr. Burr is in conversation. See what he can do. So that is successful. I'm sure that you would bring an update to council. Okay. Uh, item 311, uh, proceed with the wayfinding signage project. Again, that's Mr. Purr. And ongoing, any comments on that? Nothing to add. No. Okay, item 312, uh, task force that's happening on Thursday. Okay, item 313. Uh, Just a, a question on the on the 312. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure how or why this is here. Um, a task force, I don't remember this coming before council. Um, uh, perhaps the uh, CAO could give us some guidance on the council role in terms of uh, town halls and task forces and what best practices are in, 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 that, in, that, map, in that vein. Maybe I can ask how it cut on this to begin with. Yeah, that's a good question. I really don't know. Um, Marina, how did this item number 312 get on the... Uh... There was a discussion. That's going to happen, so... Okay, okay, good enough. Uh, I can add that was the mayor that called that task force, and that that's to 
uh, bring people together that are, are willing to uh, come up with ideas on the highway noise and also the parking. And of course, those would be recommended recommendations to either a future uh, committee or the council. And my, my question stands, by, well, it, what, what would be best practices in terms of council's involvement and, and role in town halls uh, and, and matters like that? If you care to provide a response? Specifically, Mayor's Task Force. <laughs> You guys are putting me right in the middle of this one, hey? Okay. So, um, so normally, <clears throat> town, I mean, town halls can be organized by frequently planning staff or engineering staff. Uh, planning staff will facilitate town halls to deal with issues pertaining to OCP updates, for example. <laughs> for example, engineers will have town halls with regard to road improvements, trail construction, you name it. So town halls are pretty common tools of local government to get to engage with the community and get some sort of dialogue occurring. There's all sorts of degrees of formality, which I won't delve into. Uh, an iteration of town halls is with regard to an issue that council as a whole debates. The council as a whole decides it would be best to um, facilitate through a town hall. So that's a third level. Um, there are, there's another vehicle called Mayor's Task Forces, where mayors, the Mayor's Task Force uh, is, is a, typically a focused uh, engagement uh, for a limited period of time. Uh, to deal with a specific scope of an issue. Uh, the, the purpose of that is to solicit strategic information that is then fed into some other process. So what's the best practice? Well, it depends on the issue. There's no sort of, that's the lay of the land. The best practice is, is marrying the issue to the degree of, the type and degree of engagement that is optimal relative to the issue. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that, um, Councilor Cunliffe. So, would the appropriate way to bring what brainstorming comes out of a task force to council be through a delegation? Uh, well, it depends. You know, so I've dealt with task forces and public open houses and town halls for years, and you can't rely on the quality of the information you get. Is it all just opinion? Or is it is it technical advice? Like, a, is it a combination of the two? Are you able to distinguish between the two? So it, it depends. I mean, it, 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 what happens if nobody speaks up? So, uh, which is unlikely. But the point is, uh, the, the 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 what I would suggest is a likely outcome it would be this based on the type of feedback you get that's a, that's obtained at, at this event it will sort of influence how best to how you utilize it. So the intention here, uh, just so everyone knows, is uh, this harks back to the beach park of which uh, Councillor Cunliffe and Councillor Broughton are part of. Uh, I called that uh, meeting, town hall, and a, a committee. Uh, initially, there was a task force, and it was, I think it was 18 or 19 people, might have been 20. And people just got together, came up with you know great suggestions, and then a committee was formed. And the, the same intention is, is put out here. We're going to have a meeting on Thursday, a town hall. We'll have it right here in the council chambers. And the intention is, is to uh, run a process that exchange ideas and, and uh, brainstorm and strategize. And that'll be for a period no longer than 90 days. And then we'll look to either to form a committee uh, or, or maybe those recommendations, like any committee, uh, come to the council and they come forward. Now we don't know how many people will show up. Uh, so I was just asking well, if, if it's not enough, we'll we'll move it to another venue. But uh, right now, the intention is: look, we've got we've got at least a dozen people that have reached out to myself and other counselors here, and and you know they're passionate about this. They want to give something back to the community, and as volunteers, I think we want to encourage this. So that's all it is: nothing more, nothing untoward being done, and so on. Councilor Abbott. Um, did I just ask why council weren't told about this and invited to it? I was told by a resident 
and I was had not. And it was actually in the last agenda. It was, and and I think we briefly discussed it. No. And uh, well, because no. you suggested you wanted to call a town hall, but there were residents who were actually mm -hmm. sent emails by 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 some of you to inform them of the meeting. Council was never sent an email. I would. Look like a complete idiot. And remember, they, when people started asking me that at the sorry at the, the Christmas fair, still you asked me if they were going to see me on Thursday. I don't know what they were talking about. Well, there was no intention to. Uh, this has been obviously we all know that, and look, Cambus is sitting right over there, and many others in the community have been asking us to get together and and so that they can share their experiences and their ideas. So. That's what this is. Again, this is a, a not bringing the residents together and and uh, and strategizing. Hopefully, coming up with some recommendations that can either be given to council or staff. Council writer. So, I heard this just referred to as a town hall, and then I heard our corporate officer uh, speak of town halls as uh, usually events that are, if I recall correctly, are handled by staff. For example, in in the case of an OCP review. Um, would a town hall and an event like that be something in terms of best practices that comes to council and is organized by council as opposed to a particular member of council? This is a mayor's initiative. As a part of best practice. I just heard it referred to as a town hall. So what would be the well, best practice in, in a matter like that? That's a question for the corporate officer. Not yeah, the and is that through the chair? Is that through the chair, uh, council? I raised my hand and you gave me permission to speak for which I'm eternally yeah. grateful as I always am. And so the question stands. The task force, mayor's task force. Any clearer than that? Yeah, I just heard town. I mean, we've been we've been holding uh, residents off. When are we going to get to the business of the community as opposed to doing word salad and beating around the bush and being obstructionist? That's my question to you, Councilor Reuter. Councilor Abbott. My, my question simply was to you include council in these communications, that's all. I have included you in conversations, and I, I have I've been up front. You sent I emails to the finance committee. Yeah, and I'm talking about the residents. Meeting. You sent you and Michael sent emails to residents telling them about it. You never copied council. It's in I the know. village update. Look in the village update. Is this? That's yes, it is. Dark. It's in the village update. So you're telling me you will not be informing council when you, you said this? It's out. in the village I'm update. Find out in the village update. You're telling me I need to, I'm going to Was it on the agenda? I believe it was even on the ag last agenda. Council okay. problem. Yeah, um, I apologize for not inviting you directly. Um, what happened was it was on the, the, the last agenda. We did discuss, was discussing the mayor was going to be bringing forward uh, uh, sorry, guys. Oh, you sorry, mean, Councillor Broughton has the floor. Let him finish, please. Sort of Councillor Broughton um, has the floor. Um, and uh, what I did was I I have had a number of residents who have contacted me expressing a serious interest in either the highway noise or parking. And as a result of their contacting me, I have responded to them and invited them to to the town hall meeting, ensure to ensure that they knew of it and that they knew that we were follow, that that there was follow up happening. We have repeatedly had people come and ask when there will be a parking committee, when there will be a highway noise committee, and they, we have repeatedly told the residents that we will be dealing with with that once we have a, a an organization yeah. meeting and and so on, and we have not yet. At the strategy meeting, and so I, my understanding is that the mayor is is bringing interested people together. It's not, it, it's not going to. The, there's no mandatory. Hey, Count, Councillor Broughton, um, we're going to get back to the business of the village. So thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Blackwell. You had your hand up. Thank you. I, my suggestion to council is don't sweat the details. Uh, if the appetite, if the appetite is to engage with the community, engage with the community. I wouldn't worry about, you know, maybe there were some missteps or somebody didn't get emailed. I think those are, are valid points that should be sort of remembered, but my recommendation to council is don't lose sight of the bigger picture. This is about engagement. As, as imperfect as it may have rolled, be, have rolled out in the minds of some, uh, it achieves a bigger purpose, which is something that all of council and I have heard on many occasions is solidly behind this discussion. So that would be all right, uh, item 313. 
Mr. Blackwell, uh, the protected areas and con conservation database. Any progress on that? I hope we get that signed off. And Okay, item 10, uh, 10A1, and that is uh, uh, the draft corporate communications policy on page 19. And over to you, Mr. Blackwell. Thank you. So um, as council, I'm sure is quite aware, there are four iterations of, uh, com of communication type documents, correspondence policy, a website privacy policy, a website and village update content policy, uh, electronic communication policy, uh, it's quite a few. And there's, in, in most of these, a significant amount of detail. Um, what I have brought forward for discussion purposes and direction on is sort of something that plugs the holes in some of these. I think in the fullness of time, it would be, it would be better to sort of convert this into a one document rather than have so many. But what is before you is intended to fill some of the gaps that, that uh, persist in some of these documents. And then, as I say over time, they get transferred into this. So, before you, for comment and any direction you wish to provide, uh, take that in and make any adjustments and so forth. If council says, I want, we want all this stuff in one, do that too. I, that would be my suggestion. but. I defer to you guys. Okay, uh, we'll go around the room and uh, provide comments. Uh, Councillor Conliffe. I think <clears throat> I appreciate you putting your words towards this and if this is what you recommend, I trust your, trust your work on this, so thank you. Okay, Councillor Brown. Uh, could I just clarify where the village update fits in, into this or how it's is it in one of those? The village update exists in policy 1704. And policy 1704. As I was suggesting, ideally, the, 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 the idea, the optimal would be consolidate all this, but that's a hell of a lot more work. Right. Sorry, that's a lot more work. It's quite a bit more work, right? That's yeah. for bits. Okay. Um, now, I had hoped to discuss. A little bit of, about the village update, but but that was that was removed from the agenda. So um, I'll have to leave it at this point, I guess, because it's open there. Okay, Council Writer. Yeah, I've got a, a number of questions. Um, I'm I'm a little confused as to who this applies to. Does it apply? It appears to apply. A, a, apply uh, in some measure to employees, and yet it speaks of representatives, for example, under 1.1. 1. 1. Um, so I'm just wondering what the intent is here. Um, yet under 2.2, 2, under 2.2, 2, it mentions Lions Bay employee employees. Um, does it also apply to members of council? Um, <laughs> Uh, is is a question I have. I, I, I mean, what what is this aimed at? Does it apply to contractors, employees, members of council? Um, that would be an initial question. I've got further questions as well, Mr. Blackwell. Thank you. This is primarily for the work of staff. Okay. Um, so when it, it it refers to representatives, those would be consultants working on. Yes, we've got to keep planting that seed. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll come a day. <clears throat> I'm not far future for that, but uh, that's sort of what it's for. If there's any representatives speaking on behalf of the village uh, in, a, in a consulting sort of capacity. It is a standard. Okay, so it is meant to apply to employees and contractors and not to members of council? No. Okay. Um, can I just move to 5.1? Um, just as a comment, um, it seems perhaps to be placing some undue hardship there um, that employees must respond to inquiries in a prompt manner. I think that's a good general statement, either in person by telephone or voicemail, by email or through official channels. I mean, in person, I, I, I don't know how that would work. Okay. Um, 
Mr. Blackwell. Thank you. So bylaw enforcement folks regularly do that in person. Okay. For example, public works folks will frequently do that in person as well. Okay. Yep. Um, under 5.2, inquiries should be responded to or acknowledged within one business day. And a uh, message must be acknowledged as soon as possible. Seems uh, given the paucity of staff that we have, that might create a little bit of hardship as well. It might be a little bit uh, restrictive. Um, just my observation. I'm happy to not even have it in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. You penned it. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> the chair sorry yes all right apologies and any other questions yes under 7.1 um all media relations activities are to be coordinated by the office of the cao uh unless otherwise authorized the chief spokesperson for the village of lions bay are designated members of village council i think that we probably want to define if we're writing a policy uh what the definition is of the designation um, and are all media relations activities always coordinated by the office of the CAO? Um, under 7.2, all media inquiries must be referred to the CAO. Um, again, the question, uh, if this does not apply to members of council, then I think that should be addressed in there, that that is solely in terms of operations as opposed to the executive. Um, and I'm a little unclear on 8.1. I mean, I understand the diff the differences between a partnership and a sponsorship. Um, and then under 8.3, the Village of Lions Bay will not actively promote or advertise any third party organizations, societies, entities, or businesses over another similar organization unless as part of an officially recognized partnership or sponsorship relationship. What if you had a situation where you wanted to provide some promotion or mention of a particular group, um, and there doesn't pre-exist any partnership or sponsorship arrangement, and it were perhaps to be something that staff uh, or council would think would be beneficial, it seems to me to possibly tie the hands a little bit in that instance. Anything else, council writer? Um, I, I can keep going. Um, I'd rather you cut it brief because we've got a lot on this agenda. Sure. I mean, I've got a, a number of com. I mean, it's before us for comment, so I'm trying to provide some comment. Uh, Mr. Blackwell and Peter, do you think we should provide this in advance and, and perhaps we get comments and uh, with a tight schedule like we've got? Yeah, thank you. So um, I think optimally it's direction that I'm seeking, i.e. take it back and, and edit uh, to reflect X, Y, or Z. Uh, it, it, that would be the goal here rather than go through it, I this or any other document line by line. If there are line by line sort of questions, I would certainly encourage uh, any member of council to reach out to me and sit down and, and take the time. Because the other flip side of this is I'm trying to read this and these references, it's hard to sort of keep up and understand and so forth. So let's do it on the fly. Okay. So I think maybe a sidebar call from. Councillor Reuter to, to our CAO would be helpful and, and that might speed along our meeting. So anything further, Councillor Reuter? Yeah, I, I, I would just say if, if that is, I, I understand that it takes time to go through something like this um, and I've gone through it, you provided it. Um, I, I think that the public forum is the place to do it. Um, uh, I'm happy to provide and meet and, and provide some comment and we can discuss. Um, but uh, if it comes before us in a meeting, I, I, I think in the future, if Perhaps if it we're wanting to comment offline, then perhaps it should come offline first, and then we could do that, um, and then we could speed things along at the table, perhaps, because I do have another uh, a number of other points. Could be. A, I'll defer those for now. Could be a committee of the whole. Would that be something? It should be committee of the whole. Yeah. So I, just as a general statement, because I do have a number of questions, I'd be happy to receive it at this point, um, but... Given that there may need, I, I would like to see some more back and forth on it. That I, I'd be happy to receive it, but not approve it at all. Uh, time. Thank you. So this was not before council for approval. This was just for direction. Okay. So if what I'm hearing is there's no direction uh, available at this point in time. There's some additional comments 
that uh, council wants to make before it's in, in front of council to give overarching direction on it. So um, I will make myself available for anyone that wishes to sort of do a deeper dive into some of these details. And we, we will make changes as necessary and bring it uh, back for either direction or, or approval if it gets. Okay. Uh, Councillor Abbott, is there anything um, to move on? Yeah, I, likewise, I believe with these important documents, we should go through them and discuss them. And that's part of the, not only is it part of the, the public forum or public record, it also helps us to analyze it better when you hear someone else's opinion. So this one-on-one -on -one thing, I don't think does the same thing as a group review. I think that's the purpose of council. So I understand we want to speed things up. There's an element of that we need to do, in my opinion. Um, but I will keep my comments to a fairly high level. Um, on 7.1, um, where we got the mayor designated council, he's authorized to speak on behalf with the media on behalf. I says on behalf of council. And I would like to see that on behalf of council strengthened a little bit. Um, I'd like to see some language in that says the message must represent the resolution or the council opinion when it's expressed to the media. And okay. um, uh, there's a few references to a deputy corporate officer. Um, we don't have one. And so we should fix that. And then on 11.4.6, talks about other um, social media, Facebook, YouTube. But on our website, we only have Twitter. Yeah, we, on our website, you can get to Twitter. I don't have Facebook. I think we might have YouTube and Twitter. So do we have a Twitter account or don't we? It's on our website. Um, and it also refers to employee code of conduct. Employee code of conduct, do we have one of those? Uh, I'll leave it at that. Mr. Blackhawk. Uh, that is also on the agenda, which what I would refer to as the respectful workplace. Oh, okay. Okay. This is one of the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess it's going back for a little bit more words, man. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item number 10A2, uh, budget milestones. And uh, Mr. Cherkoff. Uh, I'm sorry. Have I used my speaking time on the previous motion? I'm sorry. Previous, had I used my speaking time on the previous item? I'm... I Did I miss you? I think I did. You did. I think I did. Yeah. Oh, it was a long time ago. So I think that's all right. Um, could I? Okay. Um, because I was, because item 10 C5 was removed from the agenda um, and it, it refers to policy 1405. I just wanted to point out that policy 1405 in our council uh, orientation that manual is the updated version. And the count and uh, policy 1405 on the village website is out of date. So I think the, the village website needs to be brought up to date. Um, and uh, I'm a bit concerned if we're referring to policies that, that are not the most current policies. So, uh, as I said, if I had I been able to discuss policy, uh, item 10C5, mm -hmm. I would have uh, brought that concern forward. Okay. Okay. So, Mike Bacon. But I see the CAO noting that. And I appreciate that. All right. No other further comments. We'll move on to item number two: uh, budgeting milestones. Mr. Cherkoff. So taking into account uh, count the feedback from our last meeting regards to press timeline and filling up uh, sessions with uh, council meeting dates uh, being got it. Respectful of race time and onerous, um, but the, the proposed budget timeline here is that it's extended uh, so that um, uh, we had our finance committee meeting uh, yesterday as a, a kick at the can. Um, Councilor Abbott was uh, in attendance. Uh, we propose that next week we have a committee of the whole meeting, um, uh, which is between council meeting dates, so that uh, we're respectful of time for. Uh, for everybody involved in the process. Um, and then uh, we would work forward to incorporating um, all uh, councils and uh, uh, people members' comments into a revised uh, 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 budget. Uh, so then 
by the time it comes to council for review, um, everybody has had an opportunity to review, provide input. Um, we've extended, uh, proposed to extend uh, from January 23rd to February, end of February, um, which still is uh, a month and a half uh, over what we usually do um, in advance. Um, we can always get better. And hopefully in the next year, um, we can start our budgetary, budgetary process and meetings in June um, with a view to getting it done in November, which would be ideal. Uh, but uh, I think this uh, timeline gives an appropriate time frame for everybody to digest and review the materials provided, provide input. Um, and uh, and it's not rushed, so you want to make sure it's right. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Cherkoff? I think twenty seventh doesn't work because that's the climate action meeting. If there are any conflicts as far as uh, scheduling, please reach out. Um, I can uh, just. It's a matter of a day here or there, uh, no problems. Mm -hmm. um, this is a guideline on kind of like the path forward that we have to stick to. Okay. I have a yeah. comment. Uh, Neville, do you go ahead? Yeah, no, I just, on that suggestion that we, we're going to take our time, yes, we do need to take our time and get it right. I'm glad it's been stretched out a bit. Um, yeah, I hope we don't keep ourselves to uh, to, to a narrow um, timeline. It's important to hit milestones, but it's more important to get it right. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think we could maybe take a look from that point of view, but the, the next meeting is probably not going to work, so we'll have to find another time for that. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Um, I, I see you've extended the timeline a bit. I, I'd reiterate the same thing, that it's more important to get this right than to move it along. I see this as being still fairly compressed. Um, I think that we should probably take the dates as a suggestion at this point, which I presume they are, and um, and then have an offline discussion about what dates. I mean, I see two committees of the whole here for upcoming months planned. I'm not sure what everybody's availability is. So um, as a suggestion, uh, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, for reference, uh, I was speaking with uh, Delta and also the Township of Langley, and uh, they've completed their budget. It took them three weeks, so I guess that's a goal in the future to shoot for, but it is possible to get things done in a timely manner. So I think, um, you know, let's keep an open mind. And uh, yes, we want to get it right, but we also want to deliver some some items here in a timely fashion. And ideally with a budget, it'd be nice to get that done prior to the uh, beginning of the year. We, we need to be mindful of allowing time for you know, public participation as well for people to... Okay. And we were reminded the last meeting that uh, we, we had very little public participation. So hopefully this time around, we'll, we'll get more. Yeah. yeah. Providing a little more time for that is, I think, key. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Item number three, uh, Calvin Grove Beach Park. Uh, a lot. And that is uh, from page 29. Uh, Councillor Brown, could I suggest that be, based on the fact that, that there will be a town hall meeting on Thursday about around parking, that, that uh, this matter be tabled until after uh, some of those ideas come forward? Okay. Um, Mr. Blackwell, do we need a motion on that? or do... You need a motion to table it. Yeah. Is that a motion or is there... Okay. Uh, second. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. I think yeah. that makes perfect sense. To be I, I, I think we should. Okay. No, no, sorry, I think that we should. We're going to have a. We're now having a meeting, not town hall meeting on this. We should certainly postpone this until after that. I also think we should be looking at this holistically. Um, we should not be focusing on um, one particular incident, be it very personal to someone. But we should come up with a policy that works for the entire village. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'd echo that. Um, I think that there are people everywhere in the village who uh, may not have been as uh, energetically involved uh, as some others who also have very legitimate parking concerns and that that should be part of a comprehensive uh, uh, overview. And... Uh, um, 
that we should address this holistically, thoughtfully, and uh, and uh, I, I I support okay. your motion. Yeah. Call a question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yes. Carried. Okay. Uh, item number four: uh, draft updated respectful workplace policy. And uh, head over to you, Mr. Blackson. Thank you. So the village currently has in place, excuse me, a, a harassment policy. Excuse me. Uh, it's missing sort of a, a robust bullying component. Uh, this, these sorts of obligations are set out by WorkSafe BC. Um, through case law, things have changed. There's been a significant shift in the obligations to the employer in 2015. So what is before you would not normally come before you, is because this pertains to staff. But the this, the harassment policy was signed off by the CAO and council. So in in view of that, I'm bringing it forward for council's consideration and sign off. But usually that never happens because it's for staff only. That said. This, this does not, I mean, there's, there's council is sort of woven through this document. Sorry, Mr. Black, I'll hang up. Excuse me in the gallery. Um, Mr. Cherkoff, can you take it in the other room, please? Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Um, although council, this does not pertain to council, of course, council is woven in to this with regard to like, the interactions with staff. <clears throat> Excuse me, but just for our information purposes, I will say that it's not uncommon for council to have its own uh, bullying and harassment or respectful workplace policy. And sometimes it's standalone specific to council. Sometimes it's it's a document very much like this that pertains to, to council and staff. Uh, right now, it's just for staff. And it's only here because, uh, as they say, the previous one strangely was signed off to council. So. It is here for your view, comment, and sign up if you feel so inclined. Okay, so the uh, recommendation is to sign this off? Yes. Okay, do we have a motion? A uh, second? Oh, sorry, one other thing I should mention if I could. Uh, I forwarded this to the union, and you vetted it, and they're quite happy with it. Okay, uh, motion please. And second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Councilor Ryder. Go ahead. Councilor Abbott. Um, so Rossi said it doesn't apply to council. There's a section here that mentions council, mayor and council members are expected. Well, I've heard of Monday, et cetera. Um, that would, should also include committees, right? By extension. By extension, yeah. So committees should also be included. Um, there, uh, there's various kind of items in here that explain um, how one would put a complaint in and we would get an escalation point and so on. Um, what it doesn't deal with, and sorry, just before I go there, the previous harassment policy is now going to stand side by side with this or going to be overridden by this? You, so this would be a replacement of that policy. Replacement of that policy, okay. So but from memory, that previous policy um, and a provision for how you dealt with if the complaint was against the CAO, this policy doesn't. Um, it assumes that, um, and given our current CAO and his and his style and personality, I think it's less uh, less of a concern. Um, but there had been a case in the past, um, and it doesn't deal with that. So what happens if the complaint's against the CAO? I think that needs to go in there. Mr. Black. Thank you. No, that's intentionally not in there. I need as much wingspan as I can to be <laughs> <and> harassed. <laughs> uh, so you're eclipsing my ability. To, uh, I didn't put in there that in there because that's a lot more complicated, and there are there's costs. Yeah. So I, I think to properly address that, I would need some legal advice. I didn't put that in there because I didn't want to spend any on legal advice, but to, to uh, with respect to how to properly organize a complaint around CAO. Uh, I agree that that is a, a gap, and I would suggest that if council so directs, it would be a, a very important piece to put in there. But 
it's predicated on me getting some clear direction as to what is what is legally viable with regard to that. I don't want to write something in there that it has no status. Then, sorry, uh, I did uh, actually answer a yeah. question. I wasn't making sure that's okay. Yeah. Um, on a similar question, um, there's complaints involving the council um, for mayor. Um, and in that case, the CEO appoints an investigator. I would argue that in most sort of code of conduct and, and other things, council typically decide amongst council how to handle that complaint. And I would have thought that should be not the CEO that appoints an investigator, but council who decides whether this should go to an investigator. You want me to respond to that? Thank you to you. Uh, so you're correct. It's not council that appoints, typically it's not council that appoints the investigator. Uh, council at that point needs to take an impartial position on it. And so if there's a, so you're quite correct with regard to council having to resolve how it wants to proceed with an issue. Right. And if council says we need an investigation, which if there's an issue that's it's either it's not worth it or it, there's no real middle ground, then you, you tap the CAO the shoulder and say, this is council's resolution. Please, please make it happen. Okay. Council I council doesn't actually say that in here, then, right? No. So it should. Uh, Except this is not for council per se, but uh, if I could ask where that where, where that line is. Oh, it's on the bottom of our package or bottom of page thirty-eight. All the places, um, line one. It doesn't allow for the council to have any judgment on whether this is to go forward. It's all up to the CAO. Let's see. Yeah, council. So this is not intended for internal council issues. This would be, as I said earlier, uh, you know, it's, it's common for council to have its own iteration of this, in which case that would be articulated. This is a situation where you have a council member who has been involved in some sort of incident that qualifies as bullying and harassment. It's the CAO's job to deal with it, not council's job. Council can do something separately if it so chooses with regard to that individual, but it's the CAO's job with regard to <clears throat> administering the staff to facilitate this. And then the CAO, given the one employee model, can't sort of do too much to, to, to sort of intervene with regard to, to that issue, to, to counsel, to, to deal with a council member. So that's what this provision is for, is to find an impartial person to remove the CAO from the equation, then that information comes forward and is addressed accordingly. But it's not for council issues. So this is only a complaint against a councillor council that was directed by the say towards staff. Yeah. Now, yeah. because in the other parts of the report about contractors and other people who say it's not quite clear, I don't know if it quite, okay, I didn't read it that way. That's what it's for, it's for staff. So this, so it's not uncommon for there to be bullying and harassment complaints against members of council. It's in the media. You can find that, fortunately, and that's what this is about. <clears throat> okay, Councilor Kalaf. I just a question in regards to not addressing the CAO in this, as per Councilor Abbott's comment. Lacking that, that is something that can be added in the future. And but it lacking that, would the union not? If all are all the staff members union, everybody who's full time is union. So I thought uh, not everyone is union, but most most folks are. So in the case of a union employee felt that they were being fully harassed by the CAO, they just report to the union. There's that too, yes. So they're protected at. Essentially, until such a time as can be amended. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, 
I think uh, anything that protects our staff be welcome. So yeah. one last, yeah. Had no staff looked at this? Uh, some staff. And from your their feedback, they're comfortable and happy with this. They didn't. They asked the CAO component to be removed. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. <laughs> Yes, okay. there was positive feedback. Okay, thank you. Um, I mean, anything that, that furthers the protection of our staff, I think, is is welcome. Uh, would would some of the items in your contract, not to get into detail, but uh, okay. I'm sure some of those areas are addressed as well as to your behavior and well, such. Yeah, I can't really remember. But <laughs> it's <laughs> I've removed yeah. the sections. Yeah, there. right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor Brown. Um, Councillor Abbott was, was mentioning that, that we have language uh, which involves the CAO, and I wonder if we could take that under advisement, whether it, what, is it something you feel is, is adequate and, and useful and should be considered to be included through the ban? <clears throat> You felt you needed to give an opinion on that. I, yeah. Uh, okay. Before you answer, is it something that we can add on? Will this protect our employees and we could direction. give you direction to go and, and add something on, yes. bring it to council? Okay. And go ahead and answer, Councilor Alex. Uh, thank you. So, through you, I would just simply say the law, our, the law keeps evolving. And it's not an area of my expertise, municipal law maybe, but not employment law. And I would want to make sure that whatever provision is put in there with regard to the CAO, this stuff is current, but with the CAO piece, I would want to make sure that it's, it reflects the current case law and the obligations in relation to a CAO. And I wouldn't necessarily say in confidence the older iteration would reflect that. Okay, any other comments? Yes. Council Ryder. Um, Insofar as you mentioned that the, the council is interwoven through here, and yet that there would potentially be a separate document that would address council, wouldn't it make sense to either combine these or to have both come forward at the same time? I mean, I have some of the same concerns about, uh, you know, in, including a provision uh, where there would be a mechanism uh, that would allow a a this to move forward um, in the case of a complaint against a CAO. I mean that is something that could potentially occur. Um, so I'd like to see some language on that. I, I'd be comfortable with you penning something up and bringing it to us uh, in that regard. It's up to you whether you want to get a legal opinion on it or not. Um, I've got a couple of specific questions. Um, you know, in in that same section on page thirty eight under point two. It refers to a designated individual. That's at the bottom of page 38. Um, internal or external um, uh, investigator. Um, who would this in designated individual be? I'd like to see a definition of that. Um, and then designate is mentioned further down as well, under seven, under the appeals process. Um, um, I also have some questions up above. Um, I mean, just a point under 4.8 on the bottom bullet point. Uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling that this is incredibly restrictive of staff. Uh, any other location where the prohibited conduct may have a subsequent impact on the work relationship? My God, what are we covering here? <laughs> How broadly are we reaching? Mr. Blackhawk. So I need some direction on this. So this is boilerplate stuff. There's these, this is used by other organizations who have vetted this. Uh, the unions vetted this, but you know, you got to give me specific direction. For me, who does this for a living, I can tell you I know what the designated individual is. I'm the guy that has to use this. I mm -hmm. that means anyone that does this job will know that what that means. But if council wants to see more ex more specificity, you gotta give me the specificity. And to my earlier point, which is that council being interwoven through this, and yet this being directed mainly at uh, being for the benefit of staff, 
uh, and you're mentioning that there would be a separate policy for council. I mean, would it not make sense to do both or to interweave them or have them both come forward at the same time? Okay, one last question and then we're gonna call the question. Mr. Blackwell. So uh, this is specifically for staff. It's to update the, the harassment policy because the harassment policy is deficient. So this brings our obligation as an employer vis-a-vis -vis WorkSafe BC up to current standard. Uh, whether or not council wishes to have their own or wishes to be added to this is something that you have to you have to tell me by way of resolution. Should you have one? I would say, well, sure, why not? Why wouldn't you have one? But that is a separate discussion than with this. Than, than with this. Okay, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Of what? Can I make a friendly motion, okay. uh, amendment, sorry, that we adopt this as presented and direct, or should this be a separate function, direct you to go and seek the counsel that you need in order to address the CAO issue? Um, Mr. Blackwell. So, so here's what I would say. If council is essentially satisfied with this, then just adopt it. If you want to give me tacit direction to do that, I will put that on the to-do list. They do force. So we don't need a motion. Uh, yeah, no, okay. Could, but I would Okay. Uh, Once again, sorry. call the question. Sorry. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Opposed. Sorry, Councillor Abbott, was that for or against? No, I was in favor. Okay, um, good enough. Trust me. Well. May we okay. ask Sorry. through the chair? Yes. That you go ahead and do whatever you need to do to feel comfortable about adding yeah. your assessments. This is step one. It's Into the this. number potentially the number of steps. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item. Uh, that would be purchasing policy. Uh, I don't. Uh, over to you, Mr. Blackwell. Well, Chirkoff is here for that. The okay. Back. Yeah. Council wishes to move on to the next item. Sorry. Yeah, we'll come back to it. Uh, okay, audit report update. We'll have to come back to that then. Uh, holiday closure and a regular council meeting for discussion. That's number seven. And uh, Mr. Blackwell. Thank you. Uh, so I'm seeking direction. I'm just going to page I'm trying to catch up now. Uh, two. This is or sorry, right, 10A7, and I don't think there's anything in oh, the package. nothing yeah. in the package? Yeah. So this pertains to three days uh, in, during the week over Christmas period uh, that the office could be open. Um, the, the local governments, depending on which ones have different approach, some stay open for those three days, some are closed. Some of your neighbors are closed. Uh, it's a function of utility, uh, how much work gets done during those three days. So what I'm seeking here is direction from council with respect to whether council wants to be, whether council wants the village to be open for those three days, uh, which of the days are on the calendar? It is the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Eight? 27, 28, 29. So be open for those days or stay closed for that Christmas period. <clears throat> Okay, go around the table, Councillor Brown. Right. Well, last year the office was closed, and I don't recall that being a particular problem. So I, I, I think it's, I think it's a great idea, actually. Okay, Councillor Cunliffe. I, yeah, don't be a grinch. I think that we could. I, I don't see much getting done. I don't see residents run into the office on the 29th or anything. They can't wait until. Thank you, sir. Okay, Councillor Abbott. Um, in the past, we have closed for those days. We have addressed the utility bill issue, which is due um, at the end of the year um, and is meant to be received. And so you just need to do that once again because you'll come back and the bookkeeper will have, might have submitted it and it's on the floor and it's now late and then you won't find them. So you need to go back and look at your rules and policies around that. We did in the previous years. 
with the agreement with that no one will get fined for something that was received on the, the first right. or the second because, instead of because we were closed on the 31st. Yeah. Okay. Council Ryder. Yeah, I, I'm completely in support of this. I had anticipated you'd be bringing something else, which was uh, something that was before us last time that we didn't get to, which was uh, also giving council a bit of a early start on the Christmas season, um, uh, <laughs> uh, which would have been the two. That's part two. Okay, which would be I presume and eagerly await the uh, cancellation of the last council meeting. So if I could, yeah, just if I can get the direction for the first item, which is closure, then the second item is exactly that. If you uh, wish to make your last council meeting of the year, the 12th of December, which I suggest, 4th, 12th, first, first Tuesday. It's... So 4th, I am not available. So what, what would be the last? Sorry, it would be the 5th. The 5th and the 19th would be the standard. Right, correct. So it would be removing the 19th off your council agenda. And can I just circle back? Can we just, in an open meeting here on that first item, uh, just tell residents right now that if we're going to be closed at, at at the office, that if they drop off their utility bills during that time, that uh, they'll be okay uh, when staff comes in at the beginning of the year to pick them up off the floor? Yeah, in the village update. I would need direction to be able to close the office from, from council first before. Sure. Yeah. So okay, okay, I'm I, I'm fine with uh, closing the office. Um, and it, it, as far as the uh, uh, the council uh, deferring the final one, um, as long as this doesn't interrupt the especially the beach park or any of the other activities, and I was suppose we could call a special meeting if we needed to. So, if I could get a resolution yeah. for the office closure component. Okay, motion moved. moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Carried. And can I get a motion to cancel the 19th council meeting? Do, do you do you need for recording purposes a specific motion? Do you want to provide that to us on the first and second? I think the first is covered. Mm -hmm. the first. Yeah. Thank you. So that motion would be that the village office be closed for the dates of 26th, 27th, 27th, 28th, 29th of December 2023, okay. Christmas period. And item number two, that the regular council meeting of December 19th, 2023, be canceled. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, we'll move back to item number five, purchasing policy and uh, purchase card policy. Mr. Cherkoff. But previously, uh, the purchasing card policy um, has gone through uh, everybody for comment. Um, it was uh, uh, adopted in form, but not formally adopted, not in the last meeting. So the request here is to adopt the uh, uh, purchasing uh, card policy, uh, just general purchasing <laughs> policy, as, as uh, stated. Um, and it does incorporate the latest comments from councillors Abbott and Okay, do we have a motion? Before. Second. Any discussion? Question? Yes. My question as to point one under roles and responsibilities, we still have financial officer and not CFO, which I thought would have was one comment that was had. Um, I believe I responded to um, Mr. Blackwell. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Yes, okay. Um, I believe I responded to your question in regards to that. Um, Financial officer um, is my designation because there are no subordinates to me. A uh, chief financial officer would oversee other financial officers. So just semantics in that respect. Mr. Blackwell, if I could, it's also a specific position set out in the community charter, charter. as an officer. Yep. You know, as a standard officer position, as finance financial officer, mm -hmm. chief financial officer is not one of so this is to sort of align the language in the charter. Okay. Anything further, Council Ryder? No, not for me. Thank you. Anyone else? I presume the purchase card will come up after this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay. 
uh, the audit report update purchase card policy. Uh, sorry, the purchase card policy. So together with the general person policy, it's uh, basically part of an addendum to falls under scope of the general person policy. Uh, so first cards would be issued and encouraged for use. Um, there are limits uh, on transactional authority to uh, $1,500. Um, and uh, there is an overall limit for general use. I believe it's uh, $25,000 for all these cards combined. So that's why we have a limit for the individual purchase of $1,500. We can manage our purchasing limits. Um, uh, and the language in the purchasing call, uh, card policy aligns with the authorization limits in the general purchasing policy. Okay. We have a motion to adopt. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion, questions? I think just clarified um, in the. Um, oh. Sure. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. In, in the, um, the table, um, it's for that they're actually it's, it's part of the purchasing card in the purchasing policy. Um, we're talking about special conditions and special considerations, and I'm wondering which which. Where, 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 where specifically would that be? I'm on page uh, 52. I believe it's just the top. It's just up in the top. This is, we're on page 54 and forwards now. You, you just wrote it on the, listen, I'll, let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this offline. It's just, uh, there's, there's, in one situation, it's talking about conditions, and the other, it's talking about considerations. Michael, that's the purchasing policy. We already voted on it. Yeah. Okay. Question? Yes. That's a writer. Um, so I see that this appears to be directed at employees. Um, for example, on page 56, it talks about the purchase card being provided to employees based on their need to purchase, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yet further up, I see that the purchase cards are authorized for use by and the mayor is one of those. Now the mayor is not an employee. So um, why is that particularly in there? The uh, mayor um, has been uh, specifically identified um, as somebody that may be required to incur expenses over $50 uh, threshold. Um, all of those cards, um, there's one in the office uh, for staff use. Mm -hmm. um, there is one with um, uh, our CAO. Um, and uh, these are all limited to $1,500 transactions for cost control. Um, if it, we uh, just specifically identify the mayor as potentially having larger expenses than the FD for a time down in the village. Full disclosure, I didn't request that, and I'm not interested in the card, so it would not hurt to help us strike it. Because we've never had, we've never had one. Before. I was going to ask that question. No, Did other mayors have? No, they just experienced whatever. I've got. First of all, it's not high enough limit, and I've got my own credit card, so. So you're proposing that be removed? No, I, I would let you propose that. <laughs> I thought I just heard he you just propose that. You just said strike. All right. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, so that was one question I had. Um, uh, just under, uh, under, under that same roles and responsibilities, one, A, staff should ensure that costs associated with entertaining dignitaries. Um, that's what are we talking about here? North Korea, right? <laughs> it's uh, it's, invite me in. It's uh, that's uh, just a general uh, uh caveat. Um, we, we may have uh, and I don't know historically for me if there has been, but uh, members from other councils or communities that have come here and we've entertained them. I it's just sounded good. Mr. Blackwell, could you elaborate on that? Sure, yeah, thank you. Uh, this is really common. This is in the mall. The reality is most municipalities have dignitaries of sorts. Uh, show up. Um, the definition of dignitaries, I think, is sort of fairly broad and intended to be polite. Mm -hmm. It's to, to deal with those important people that, that come to the community for an official capacity. So if we had a member of the Squamish Nation, for um, example, or 
on a particular exactly. days and you can buy them lunch. Yes, that's what it's for. Okay. So what this is saying is that any cost that will be incurred on that front, if it exceeds a hundred dollars, shall receive prior approval by the CAO. Okay. Uh, on B, when a staff per diem has been paid, only the dignitary's portion of the meal bill shall be paid. What does that mean? Do we have staff diem? You've already got your per diem. If, you, if you're away and you've yeah. got your per diem already, you would only pay, you would claim the per diem. But it's referring to a dignitary here. I'm asking, I guess, I'm asking. You're the guy. You, you, take, you, you take the. It's really normal. Yeah. So you've got a per diem and you're taking someone else out to lunch, you can only claim his because yeah. you've already got yeah. paid your per diem. You don't double, double, double. Yeah. Okay. It just seemed a little unclear to me. Um, under C, um, again, the CAO or designate comes up. This would be, for example, financial officer, financial officer. Okay. Um, Mr. Black, all right, maybe thank you through you. Typically, it's going to be a financial financial officer, but it may not be. It may be, depending on the scenario, somebody else may get tapped on the shoulder to deal with an issue. Call, perhaps. Call, as an example. That's it for me. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion. Uh, yep. Councillor Abbott? Um, we've got a few positions here that snuck in once again. We cleaned them up in the previous one. Uh, we have a deputy corporate officer and we have a manager of operations. Last time we changed those to department, many other things were more generic. Black than those ones. Thank you. So I'm hopeful that you will shortly have a deputy corporate officer mm -hmm. and you will no longer have an acting municipal coordinator. So that's why that's in there. There's no such thing in terms of uh, a community charter as a municipal coordinator. There is something in the community charter of uh, corporate officers. So this is about utilizing appropriate names. Uh, with regard to those other the manager thing, now there is per se. I put that in there. Should anything change, so rather than it being too foreclosed, it gives a little bit of latitude. If what I was saying on the previous policy when we discussed this, we change manager of operations to department manager, something more generic. You change it all the way through the document, probably would have been easier just to do on this one as well and be consistent. Okay, no further questions. Uh, uh, the motion uh, was amended to remove the mayor off of that. And uh, do we have uh, all, all the questions? All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Carry. Okay, uh, item number six, uh, Mr. Cherkoff audit update. A report, I think. We just had that. Like we just we had the earlier. Sorry. Thank you. If we could, so this is for the benefit of the community. It was addressed and closed. No, no. Joe addressed it earlier, and the matters arising. Yeah. Oh, so you really gave us the report, and the matters arising. It's done. Good enough. Not straight. You don't have to repeat. It. Mm -hmm. well, okay. okay. Yes. Oh. Unless you had something further to add yourself. Okay, item uh, B, uh, Lions Bay Beach uh, Park Advisory process updates. Any further update? Do you have anything further? I don't think we'll have anything further until tomorrow yeah. evening. I think I, I gave an update earlier in the, uh, there is a, a written uh, piece in the, in the agenda that I could refer the okay. community to. But, uh, I've spoken to it. Okay. Uh, item C1, uh, Mayor, one employee model. A recommendation is that council endorse the one employee model by ensuring the CAO is utilized as the primary point person for all corporate communications. Uh, do we have a motion for that? Moved. Okay. Second. All right. Discussion. Okay. Well, I guess it. We could have a little, like, kind of expand on what is intended by corporate communications. Okay. Like, um, speaking to the public, speaking to the media, or 
So you're we, we're doing the one employee model, right? Well, we've always had the one employee model. Okay. So I'm just, this seems very specific. We, we have the one employee model in place, but I just would like some clarity about what the corporate communications mean. And I don't know if that's a question for Mr. Blackwell. Well, thank you through you. So my interpretation of corporate communications would be anything to do with corporate matters would come through the CAO. So anything to do with the business of the, the village and the municipality would come through the CAO. So would that be a distinction between operations and no, all of it? All, all operations Could you just come through the employee, the, the one employee model. Uh, a, a bylaw complaint issue would, would, would rather than phone up a bylaw officer, would he contact the CAO and the CAO would deploy the staff. If there was a water leak, you would get a hold of your CAO and the CAO would deploy staff. So in that case, it would be our own. So what that, I think, I mean, normally this sort of concept is to address <clears throat> The complexities, the interpersonal complexities that happen when there's too many, too many, and too many cooks in the kitchen. And yeah, uh, you know, I, there are staff members that may see a councilor, mem a council member, sort of, you know, outward thinking about an issue as actual direction. Yeah, I understand. So to avoid any of those complications, this sort of focus. So does this minimize the sort of the power that? say counselors would have and, and over employees and um is that no. is the idea that they don't have any power no i think that was always the sorry so no they, they through this the, maybe i didn't explain that right but when when uh, a counselor or a mayor phones up one of the employees other than the cao that employee may think that feels they, that okay they're being they're, they're, they're you know, it's coming from a position of power mm -hmm. and they feel like they're being directed. Yeah. And I think this one employee model communication, it directs everything through uh, our CAO. As an example, the finance committee, there was a question they wanted to reach out to, to Joe. And I said, you know, I think that's fine, but you need to go through the CAO and direct that question through the CAO. So the CAO is aware of it. And also there's not any misinterpretation. If I could, too, another benefit is it helps manage workload. You know, as I say, uh, taking direction from other folks does not necessarily mean that the other folks, whoever they might be, have an understanding what other priorities are on, on the table at any given time. So it allows for organization of those priorities. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, no, I think that, Claire, I, I, this is essentially as per my experience on last council, exactly. I mean, we had leeway where we you could call the public works officer and ask him a quick question uh, without going through the CAO to ask him to ask the question to ask, but any sort of direction always went through the CAO to be executed by staff. I just, when you said corporate communications thought, I, I, I guess I was thinking, Something totally different. So, thank you for clarifying that. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I got a yeah. question. Yeah. Okay, Councilor Ryder. Yeah. Um, this is a question that came up in our uh, early conversations before you were with us, and um, I think you were asked about the one employee model versus, I think, what you termed the collaborative model. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I. Don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, I'll give it a shot, um, which is that in an ideal situation, uh, uh, a collaborative model uh, is the preferable one, um, but it requires a certain amount of uh, cooperation and good manners, table manners, on the part of, uh, of, of, of council, um, and that the default model then, if things aren't working, uh, I guess, would default to the single employee model. I mean, I'm reading the language in here, um, and I'll let you comment on that in, in a moment. Um, 
the idea that the CAO cannot manage staff if members of the council continually communicate with staff surreptitiously. I mean, I think this is painting a picture of a, of a chaos um, or, or a sort of anarchy that I don't perceive as, as existing. I'm sure our CAO has things well in hand. Um, and I would say that in a village of our size, uh, you know, sometimes there is direct communication. I mean, if a water main is breaking somewhere, I mean, we all know each other, a quick call um, can, can assist in moving things forward and actually perhaps save you time. Um, so again, I would like to aim for the most ideal model, um, as opposed to defaulting to, uh, one that is predicated on the assumption that we operate from chaos and surreptitiousness, et cetera. But, uh, anyway, I'll let you answer the difference between the collaborative versus the single employee model. It's the black hole. If you're you, uh, so... This is the one employee model is a standard model that most is particularly new councils launch with. Um, one of the big reasons for that is a first term counselor doesn't even know what they don't know. I was having a conversation earlier with a former elected official. And they were joking that it took them three terms to really hit their stride. The first term was a train wreck. The second term, they were functional. The third term, they were able to realize their full potential because they're so many moving parts. So because of those complexities uh, for you know, a, a council that's primarily or entirely first-term council, the one employee model works really well. If on the other hand, you have a council where the, the councilors have been you know, elected multiple times, they know the protocols, they know the expectations, they've heard the drill over and over and over, then you're more likely to be able to steer to a more of a, of a collaborative model, which is the optimal state of affairs. Uh, but it's predicated on the fact that people have a long history of understanding the mechanics of governance. They know of, of the importance of, of keeping things at the policy level and avoiding the pitfalls of getting into operational details. Uh, of course, this is not born from sort of that the notion that you're suggesting in terms of that draconian backdrop. It's not about that at all. It's just about managing sort of those fundamentals I've alluded to earlier and the dynamic of power to staff. As I say, it's, it's not uncommon. In fact, it's quite common for elected officials to have no idea that their, their random comments that were just sort of observational were taken as direction. Uh, this this is a common occurrence. So it just simplifies everything. It's not meant to be anything more than that at all. Okay, uh, Councillor Broughton had his hand up. Sorry, Councillor Broughton had his hand up to, to that. Um, does that necessarily have to come from experience or can that just be a matter of, of you know, council behaving as they should? Um, I would expect that there'd be instances where you could have long-term counselors who would violate that and, and new-term counselors who could respect that. I mean, wouldn't it be just part of a, an orientation that, that council takes to, to respect that moving forward? I mean, does it necessarily come with experience? Mr. Blackwell, Thank one you. final answer, and then we'll go to Councillor Brown. So through you, uh, it's not black or white. Yes, there are multi-term counselors that choose not to follow the rules, so they, are, they are ungovernable, if you will. Um, I'm, so I'm not talking about those exceptions, I'm talking about the general, general application. The general application is that there are lots of moving pieces around municipal mechanics, and it takes at least a term to fully appreciate those. And I think most counselors don't find their legs until term two. So that's, and that's a generic statement. And that I think will be true most of the time. Councillor Ryder, anything further before we move to Councillor Broughton? Uh, yeah, one thing further. I mean, in, in a realistic way, if I had something to submit to the agenda or I had a question about budget um, or, you know, I had a question about an operations question, um, that would then mean that I need to go through you to get to that particular manager or person. And wouldn't that make your life vastly more complex? I mean, how locked in is this? I see this as a as something that will, in fact, increase your workload. Thank you, through you. So 
there's there's no optimal scenario here. So on one hand, if you don't, it can create problems. On the other hand, if you do, it can create problems. So this, by the way, this is not my motion. It's under the mayor. Mm. So not under the CAO. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to put words in the mayor's mouth here. Uh, but what I can say is, will that increase workload? I suppose. Will it avoid other issues? I suppose. How hard and fast should this be adhered to? Well, that's a conversation for council with regard to how hard, how hard and fast. As I say, that the, the catch-22 is how do you know when you're being perceived as directing staff, adding workload to an already flat-out group just because the comments were, were uh, taken on board as direction. It's hard to know. So, six months are probably... Um, I'm the, the one page here that was provided with this is on page 59, 58, 59, 59, 59. Um, and the, the wording, which has been described as draconian, was it, or whatever, I'm not sure. Anyway, th this is the wording that came from the municipal advisor's report uh, at the end of his time and experience with the village of Lions Bay. And what he's suggesting is best practice. And, and what his recommendation is, is that, that this council resolve to adopt the one employee model. And then he goes on to give reasons why that's really important. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think it's really important to note where this wording has come from, who it's come from, and uh, the, that it's, it was a recommendation that, that uh, he wished us to consider based on, on uh, presumably his experience of with being with us for what four or five months, so um, I, I think it's it's just a matter of of you know we do have the one employee model. It's it's um, confirming that we we uh, value it. I think and that uh, and and certainly uh, uh, we want to be as, as informal and as collaborative as, as we possibly can, but uh, sometimes. Uh, it's very important to have very specific ground rules from which to to uh, enjoy our freedoms. So, okay. Good Councilor Conlon. So thank you for second round. I just wanted to confirm. I think Michael, you just did that. We already do observe the one employee model. Is, would that be correct? Previous council did. To my knowledge, that has not changed. So I'm wondering if there is if a resolution is even necessary. This is just a kind of a reminder of how this supposed is supposed to work. Is I that a question? Can I answer that? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I put I put this forward because, uh, as we all know, uh, the council has been very dysfunctional. When we talk about a collaborative model or a one employee model. Uh, we're at the, the far end of the spectrum from collaborative at this time. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Blackwell has explained that, and he explained that in his interview. It was in a well-functioning, well-oiled organization, ideas and, and uh, initiations come from all different areas, and there's a trust level across the whole organization. Then you have the other extreme, where you have very little trust and you've got a dysfunctional group. And Mr. Blackwell said during the interview, then you have to resort to being more strict on the one employee model. Well, we see on that page 59 from our provincial advisor, a recommendation to follow that model. So this is, a, a, is just a reaffirmation that we need to uh, uphold the one employee model because we've got counselors, Mayor, councillors, whatever, I don't want to point fingers, but are going directly to employees. They're undermining our CAO, and our CAO is at times being perhaps rightly or wrongly, feeling like he's micromanaged, and I don't think that's correct. So I think we need to stand up and we need to re-acknowledge this one employee model, and that's what this is. So. We'll go around one more time. No, not one more time. I haven't spoken. Okay, Councillor Abbott. And it keeps going up, but I've got you something. All right. Um, I, I, 
I remember Randy Deal saying this. I also remember Randy Deal telling us there's a difference between just trying to get some clarity on a piece of data or a number and the approach staff. And as long as you understand the difference and you're careful about it. Um, and I do understand what Ross is saying. Sometimes staff might interpret something when it's no different from that. No. The president of a company goes on site telling him not allowed to say anything because anything he says, people are going to run and start doing. So there's a little bit of that. I think we've actually working pretty well as far as this thing's concerned. I didn't think this was a concern at all. I think uh, it seems to be working well. I think everyone understands the bounds. Um, you know, we, we told more than once, one, more than once for you, Ross. Yeah, get on the jet, ask him this, well, we still the call, do what you need to do. I to now have to go through you each time um, just to, to speak to a staff member. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary. We all understand the one important rule. We had it on the previous council. There was a complete understanding that approaches that exempt staff as you see fit. If they think they're getting direction from you, well, they will go to the, the CAO and say, hey, my councillor told me, said this, is that true? Um, and then you can bring it to us. I think having that, that flexibility is, is important. I don't think this is needed. Um, uh, and, um, I think if you believe there's an issue with this and needed to change something, Approach the councillor, tell them they're out of bounds. Um, and I think that should be the end of it. Um, and as you said, it's not your resolution anyway. So I'm surprised to hear that, uh, that, that uh, from, from the mayor that it was your concerns that have been micromanaging or you're unable to do your job. I think that's overreached. So I don't, I don't think we need this. Um, I think it's understood. And I think we should deal with it on a case by case basis. If there are issues. Okay. Motion's on the table. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Opposed. Okay, motion carried. So interesting. Okay. Next item is Councillor Broughton, a relocation of the north south eastbound railway crossing. Stop signs. This this is now this is the second time on the on the agenda. It was on la, our last agenda as well. And um but we, we didn't get to it. Um so I just want to point out that um, that the there has been a suggestion that by by um, sorry this is a second that on page 60 is that what you're looking for yeah looking for page 60 thank you very much Okay, basically I'm saying be resolved that the north, south, eastbound traffic control stop signs at the three Lions Bay rail crossings be installed consistent with the ISL engineering report of January 16, 2023, uh, reflecting the traffic and topographical challenges for safety of each location. Further, that the westbound stop signs at each location be retained for resident safety. Now, um, Transport Canada has has a, a, a national mandate uh, regarding the railroad, and basically their mandate is to protect railroad and uh, vehicular interaction. And um, so, you know, the and, and I think if we look very carefully at the uh, locations of, of of the railway crossings, essentially we have intersections that have railways running through them versus a railway that, that has, you know, a sort of a roadway crossing it as such. The village of Lions Bay is, is responsible for the safety of its residents and the, the, uh, the, the way, you know, traffic is managed within the village. And um, I think it's, it, it's uh, uh, an overreach for, for Transport Canada to be uh, ordering the re removal on that. And I don't accept that that is that's that is uh, within their reach. Um, if if we look at I, I I contacted our MP, I contacted our ML, um, and and sought their support on this and sort of clarity clarity on this. And both of them felt that that um, it it was was a jurisdiction that that Lions Bay you know should should have control over and. Um, when uh, you'll notice in the uh, presentation that's in in the uh, agenda package, there are there are uh, 
several photos. There are three photos. One is in West Vancouver at 16th and Bellevue, where you see warning lights and a stop sign. Um, North Vancouver, you have uh, Riverside and Spicer. You have uh, crossing <clears throat> uh, lights and warning signs and, and a stop sign. And the, uh, the information that we've been pro provided is that uh, we should remove our stop signs because it might create confusion uh, for, for the driving public. And uh, we also, and, and so I, I'm unclear as to why Lions Bay would be requested to remove their stop signs when, when Lions of West Vancouver and North Vancouver have not been asked to do so. Um, I also uh, have a, a, a photograph there provided by um, Councillor Hunleth uh, of, of a near miss of one of the CN trucks going through the, uh, the, inter the uh, intersection. Uh, the lights were not flashing. They were not activated by the, by the truck. And um, had there not been a stop sign there, there probably could have been a very serious uh, truck vehicle uh, crash. Um, so looking at the, at the locations, uh, involved here, I talk about topographical in, information, and both at, at um, uh, Brunswick and particularly at the Lions Bay crossing, there's a significant, when you come over the railroad tracks, there's a significant drop off there. And there's it's very, very difficult for any uh, vehicle of any size to be able to see over that edge. So it only makes sense for the safety of our, our community and uh, looking at, the, at uh, that we retain the stop signs westbound. Um, I think there is some merit in, in moving the stop signs uh, as recommended in the report. I think we paid something in the neighborhood of uh, $16,000 for the report. And uh, it, it took into consideration the, the vehicle and train interaction. But I, my uh, point is, is that it, it clearly, it was done in November, did not take into consideration the topographical nor the pedestrian um, interactions and, and, and the fact that uh, we're talking about, you know, beachfront access in all those locations. It's the only, the pinch points, it's the only place you can get over near the, near the Lions Bay Beach Park. Um, live it, you know, that, that is my, my access way, my roadway. And um, I'm very, very careful going over the railroad tracks because typically there will be uh, children. I've, I've had children sitting on, on skateboards down there, people walking along carrying uh, beach paraphernalia. Um, and, and and it's just it's a danger point. So, Officer Brown, yeah. would you like to read the motion? And, okay. and then we can move forward. Okay. Thank you. So, be it resolved that the northbound, southbound, eastbound, and eastbound traffic control signs at the three Lions Bay Rail crossings be installed consistent with the ISL engineering report, engineering report of January the 16th, 2023, traffic operations review near three rail crossings reflecting the traffic and topographical challenges for safety of each location. Further, that the westbound stop signs at each location be retained for resident safety. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay, discussion? Yeah, um, I'll go. Uh, Michael, uh, when we spoke about this last time, I think the uh, the expectation was you were going to go away away and meet with various people who you've who you have spoken to. Um, but I think council's expectation you were to come back and say, yeah, you'd convince them all. Um, and they all supported this, and we were going to have some buy-in from other stakeholders that they agreed with this. But clearly that's not what's happened. Um, um you might have you've had other um, politicians agree with you, think think what you're doing is right, but we haven't gone back and got Transport Canada to agree to do this. And I think that was the, the expectation. Um, you state that, you know, that their decision is unsupportable. Uh, this is an unsupportable argument. It's unsupportable to you, but clearly they haven't moved off their position. So I, I, as you probably know, when you brought this, when you spoke um, as a resident member in the previous council, and I was always against us 
removing these stop signs. So that was the Greasy principle. Mm -hmm. The problem was, um, you know, with that, when that came to council, um, the decision, once again, what I didn't do it for, was to go do a study. And now we've done a study. Now we've got an engineer that's told us what to do. But Transport Canada telling us we have to follow it. I hear a lot around this table about following the experts. I think the need is to go convince them and get them to agree to change it. We can't, I don't think we as a council can just sit here and decide we are only going to do part, implement half of the, of the um, recommendation. So I, I'm uncomfortable with that. I don't think we have the jurisdiction. Um, unfortunately, we went down this path, but given where we are, I think we have to get others to agree the stop shine suits should stay um, rather than go do, as I said, do part, of, do part of the recommendation and leave the rest in. I think, you know, we're just going to get told at some other time by Translation Canada, what are you doing? So, Council Ryder. Yeah, um, I echo that assessment. Um, Michael, I know you spoke very passionately about this in front of the last council, yeah. and one of the results of that was this study. And I see this study as something that is on our books. Um, it's basically advice by experts now that we have a situation and a recommendation as to how to address this. Um, Transport Canada's arguments may be uh, unsupportable, um, um, but they are a 400 pound gorilla. Um, I would liken this to a tree that you have in your yard. Um, the tree may be unsafe, but you may have no knowledge of it. If it falls on your house, your insurance company will pay for it. If it falls on your neighbor's house, uh, their insurance company will pay for it. But if you now have a report that the tree is unsafe and should be taken down in some expert's opinion, um, and you don't act on that report, um, and it then does fall, um, then you've got trouble. And unfortunately, we have this report now in front of us. Um, and I feel, unfortunately, that, uh, I mean, I could have thought of all kinds of creative ways in which this could have been addressed before we had this report on the table, but we do, and we have been advised. And if something were to go wrong down there and we don't follow the report, then I think that puts us in a very bad position, uh, analogous to the tree situation. So, um, you know, if the MP and the MLA said that Lions Bay should have jurisdiction. That's, uh, I mean, I appreciate it. they're sympathetic to that. I've seen the photos. Um, I'm reminded of an incident where I've been in traffic court and the judge says, well, um, you know, and I've, I've said, hey, I was just going with the flow of traffic. Why am I being picked on? And yeah, well, you're just the guy who was stopped. Um, okay. And uh, so I think that th we have this report in front of us. And just because there are other instances um, where there are stop signs and, and uh, lights, um, we now have a, 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 a requirement to move forward as per the report. It's unfortunate it went there, but it is there. Okay. And so uh, I think- Please wrap it up, Council Ryder. I am wrapping up. Thank you. And I think that well, at this point, we have no choice but to go with the report, unfortunately. Councilor Brown. Okay. The the report was commissioned by the Village of Lions Bay, and the uh, the council meeting that I attended, uh, my point was to not go with the report. To be clear, you are the reason the report occurred. No, I'm not the reason the report occurred. So that Councilor Brown, continue on. Please don't interrupt. I beg your pardon. Absolutely not. So that that is false. Um, the the, um, the, uh, friend, the 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 item was being discussed at council, and the uh, and I took perspective exactly the same perspective that I have now which is that Lions Bay has jurisdiction because if, if you read the uh, outline that I've provided, it it's, talks about the Motor Vehicle Act. It, it speaks of who has control in terms of, of who has jurisdiction, whether it's the Railway Act or whether it's, it's, it's the roadway. We have a Lions Bay roadway, which is if there was no railroad track there, there would be an intersection there. 
and Lionsgate would control it in a certain way. Um, and what is what is happening here is there's an indication that 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 um, as a result of of my presentation to previous council that a report was done. That is not, a, not that is not true. The 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 report because uh, the the position that I took at that time was that this was this needed to be dealt with. Uh, exactly as I have been dealing with it subsequently, which is at the political level, which is I'm speaking to the the appropriate individuals. This, this is an example of bureaucracy gone wild. And uh, it's a matter of that, that we need to ensure that we take control of our citizens' safety. And that uh, the fact that we've had a report done, uh, that's a village report. It's not a, it's not a uh, report for Transport Canada. Um, and the report is was done in November. There is no, it, it is focused on, on the Railway Act and not on the Highways Act, Highway Traffic Act. And uh, rather than getting involved in, you know, you know arguments around the, uh, the various, various laws, uh, I think mm -hmm. we either go with, with the first proposal, which is to get some benefit of, this, of the wasted $16,000, which I in no way supported, um, but get some benefit out of it. And because it does make some suggestions that make the intersections more functional uh, or leave it alone. And when, when West Vancouver and North Vancouver remove their stop signs, then I think we start, then we, we consider moving stop signs and putting our, our village residents' safety at risk. Okay. Uh, my feeling is uh, that the safety of having those stop signs is well worth it. Uh, that's a, especially on the line of Bay Avenue, there's a blind corner there, kids walking up from the beach or adults walking up from the beach and a stop sign at least makes people think that they need to come to a stop or at least slow down as opposed to coming over those tracks. And I drive that daily. It's a blind spot there. And I don't know what else could be done other than retain those stop signs. Question? Council Ryder. There could be all kinds of creative appro approaches here, or there could have been, but now the focus is on us. We have this report, um, and we have we have to act on it. Um, again, the the people that you needed to get on board is the 400-pound gorilla, and that's Transport Canada. That hasn't happened, and that's still before us. Um, uh, further, we're talking here, we seem to be talking about the one stop sign at Lines Bay Ave, no, no. Um, but I see here that we're, that you're proposing that we, we remove all of the westbound stop signs. Um, in, 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 we retain all the westbound stop signs. Pardon me, that we retain all of them. Yeah. Um, you know, again, <laughs> I know this is a hard nut to crack, um, um, but it seems to me you failed to crack it and that Transport Canada is gonna come back. And if there, is a, if there is a problem that occurs as a result of the stop sign, sign or signs having been retained, then we have acted as a village in contravention or against a report that has been delivered to us. And that places us in a liability position, not to mention the fact that Transport Canada um, is not gonna be happy about this. And at some point it'll surface again. Um, so I wish you'd been successful, but the the contact with the MLA and the MP should have led to some kind of yielding or or um, compromise on the part of Transport Canada. That would be convinced, but we just don't have it. Council Robin. Council, uh, the Transport Canada, there the, has been a request to meet with Transport Canada for some time, and that has not occurred. And so um, I'm, it's not something I'm particularly interested in in uh, dealing in, in meeting with them about um, because we have we, we have all this other information which is which is is uh, is much more powerful quite frankly um, we 
<clears throat> Can I ask a, just a question? We would Councilor Cunliffe, uh, uh, Mr. Blackwell, have, have you looked at this in much detail? Is there, do you have any feedback for council on, on this situation? I have not reviewed it. I can speak to sort of the notion of duty of care. Uh, in my experience, I can tell you that it is correct that once a local government becomes aware of an issue, it becomes responsible for it. Owes a duty of care. However, that said, so long as that municipality has exercised all reasonable actions associated with that and can go no further, it is it has absolved itself of any liability beyond that point. So based on what I'm hearing, um, it sounds very much like there's clear direction from this ISL report. I think it's then incumbent on the municipality to ensure that it's done its due diligence and, and, and dealt with the matters pertaining to duty of care. Once it's it's satisfying all of that, if Transport Canada is not relenting, in my view, then the, the village is in the position of standing back and saying, we've done all we can. We owe no further duty of care beyond that. We've taken all reasonable steps. And I think that's what a court of law would adjudicate on. What if that, is, and I'm talking specifically of Lions Bay Avenue, there's a blind spot there and and council removes those signs and people now don't have to stop when there's no lights flashing and they come over that and you can't see kids walking up that street from the beach and they're coming up there all the time. What happens then? So I think that's a fair question. So that's a slightly different issue. It's a safety issue that may or may not necessarily pertain to, it could be a railway crossing, could be a hairpin turn, it's an unsafe condition. And I think with that, there is a duty of care it's, that is above and beyond the question of the rail crossing. And it would be in relation to the appropriate messaging, whether it be done through signage, whether it be done with, with uh, sort of stuff or speed humps or some combination of elements to let people know that they are, they need to slow right down, that there's a hazard uh, uh, that they're about to encounter. There's lots of engineering solutions around that, that, that the village could consider because it's a blind corner and it also happens to have that rail cross thing. So they're not mutually exclusive necessarily. Hey, Councilman Cunliffe. I was just gonna say, I, I think we've exhausted this topic and I think we're ready to call the question. Okay. Could, could I just say one more thing to, to our corporate officer, um, that there is a recommendation from our public works manager to take that into account and to create that extra measure of safety, stop bars, painted lines on the sidewalk to warn people of the, the issues that, that you um, have, have drawn our attention to. So that is in place. Um, that duty of care is addressed in the plan. Um, unfortunately, um, that 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 we are have this requirement to remove the stop sign, okay, but we're starting to measure in place. Yes. Can you wrap up, please? Address, yeah, I am. Um, that to address that extra duty of care to warn people of the hill and the blind spot. So there, that duty of care has been factored in, and that was a recommendation from our public safety okay. manager. We'll call a question. All in favor? Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Motion carried. And I'd like my vote recorded on that. It's this is recorded. I'm sorry, Abbott. Okay, uh, item number four, uh, Councillor Abbott, the Office of the Municipal Governance Ethics Commissioner, page 68. Okay, so with this, um, came from an archive and had this sort of articles or sort of news last week. And, um, City of Port Moody, um, Passed a resolution at council to call on the provincial government um, to set up an, an independent um, office of the of ethics commission of the ethics commission. Um, the resolution that I have in here is exactly what they passed. Um, I've also copied and pasted quite shamelessly um, what what was discussed. There and what was reported out in, in that meeting. 
what was discussed in that meeting and the motivation behind the, the council that brought this forward. I, I personally think it's a, it's a really good idea. I don't believe that then their motivations are necessarily the same as ours, or well, for that matter, anyone else's. But I think this idea of having some um, ethics commissioner, um, some independent body um, that, that can be called upon and has some teeth and some ability to make changes, unlike the experience we went through with the provincial advisor who you know, continues to remind us he had no authority and he couldn't tell us to do anything. Um, so, you know, and for what we've got, we went through then with someone that trying to get us to do something but couldn't tell us to, um, would have been alleviated had we had something like this in place. I think there are lots of other communities that could do with it. Um, and I personally think, like, you know, well, really, that it should be something that problems you just set up. So, yes, you've all read the report. Um, some of you might have heard the news reports or heard other opinions about it. I don't know. Um, but that's that's what it is in a nutshell. Okay. Would you like to make a motion? I could read the motion. Um, that the village of Lions Bay supports the city of Port Moody in calling for a province to establish an office of the municipal government ethics commissioner to provide a fair and unbiased, sorry, unbiased resource for municipal governments to turn to provide guidance on issues such as legality, conflict, code of conduct violations, and bullying. And that staff send a letter to the Lower Mainland Local Government Association, LMLGA, the Union of BC Municipalities, BCM, the Premier, and the Minister of Municipal Affairs to inform them of this resolution. Okay, second. I'll second that. Okay, discussion. Councillor Broughton. Um, th this came up at the UBCM and, and it was very well received, I believe, there. Uh, I'd just like to read one paragraph, which I think is really helpful. Um, it says, as it stands now, municipal councils are self-regulating bodies. This is currently, there is currently no place for councillors or or councils to turn to outside of council itself, turn to outside of council itself for seeking neutral investigations or other supports around the issues such as legality, conflict of interest, code of conduct complaints, and bullying. How or if a council chooses to address allegations or complaints made by a member of the public or other members of council is decided by a majority vote. At times, uh, the very people that are facing an accusation or concern could oversee how it is handled. Could we take this as read, Michael? We have it in front of us, all of us. Uh, I don't think uh, it's in the package. Yeah, you just read yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Um, I'll just finish this paragraph. Though. Conversely, there is no protections or supports for counselors in minority situations who may be facing issues such as bullying or instances of retaliation. While councils can seek legal opinions, undertake internal investigations, or hire external firms, the direction to undertake these steps and the review of actions of any findings is ultimately up to a council. And these decisions usually occur behind closed doors. So I just thought it sort of resonated for me. So I just wanted to read. Okay, Councillor Cunliffe. I'm happy to have the question. Okay. Any other yes. questions, uh, Councillor uh, Ryder? Yes. Yeah. Support this motion, by the way. Um, I think it'd be great to support Port Moody in this. Um, uh, we know that there uh, are a number of municipalities who could benefit from this. Um, we certainly would have been one of them. Um, I uh, fully support this and okay. ready to move forward. All right, I'll call the question. Oh, Councilman, or sorry, Mr. Blackwell. Just to draw your attention to a really rather striking word here, and that is the word resource. So uh, if I think a resource is valuable, but based on everything I've been hearing about this topic, it falls short because I think councils are looking for more than just a resource to bounce ideas off of. They're looking for an adjudication board idea and that's not what that word represents just fyi so if through this there are further conversations at, a, at an elected level you may want to sort of point that out that the word resource is not strong not, enough not what you're looking for you're looking for okay. more than that. but that's right. not in the motion correct right 
Okay, I fully endorse it as well. All right, we'll uh, call the question to beef up that motion then. No, I think we no, can keep motion the motion should. as it's All right, we're calling the question. Yeah. All in favor? Yes. yes. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Okay. Thanks for bringing that. Okay, uh, correspondence. Councillor Cunliffe. All right, so I would say that the First part. Uh, hang on. It's oh, like, it's, you're. Am I done? You're, yes, you are yeah. absolved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you finished off? Yes. Yeah. I can't settle. Okay, Neville. Q1 of Councilor Abbott. <laughs> you're two. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, so I'll try to get through these fairly quickly by putting some of them together. So the, the first one, um, NDB government dealing with policing in Surrey. The <clears throat> second one, Sally Police transition, and the one from Ivan Scott on the 3rd of October, once again on the same subject matter. Um, I'm going to take all of those as, as received. I'm not going to pass comment. Um, and I'm going to assume the rest of this council doesn't want to get into that fun fight unless someone chooses to. Agreed. Agreed? Yes. I'm good. <laughs> um, inclusive rooms, day ceremonies, I, yeah, fine, I'm good to receive that. I think we already have that well covered. Well covered. Um, the ferries workshop, um, maybe Ross might be interested. Um, if anyone wants to go, there's a, there's a ferries workshop, feel free to go. I don't think we need to discuss that. Um, the the idea conference. Um, I'm going to suggest if anyone wants to travel uh, to Camloops for that, they're, they're welcome to. But I don't think it should be paying for anyone to go to it. You know, it might be a fun event. It sounds like it's got lots of lovely wine tasting and things at it. Um, new operations officer, so the Duncan. Can, sorry, we can just say thanks for those. There's a new operations officer in the LD. Um, streamlining delivery of rental housing um, through pre-approved pre plans. I don't know that that's um, something we're really to participate in. I don't think we apply to this. I'm happy to just receive that. The, the next two, um, Ross, I don't know if you want to take this away. The next two are the, um, the fire dis dispatch report and the RCM RCMP report. We never used to receive those in correspondence before. There used to be a report in the body of the actual agenda. Um, I don't know if there was a conscious decision or if, or if it just ended up in this place, but that's how it was normally done. But we'll take them as um, received. And if anyone wants to comment on them, we can, we can open for comment on those as if they were in the agenda, I guess. If anyone's got any comments? Oh, it's a bit to go back into the agenda because we that way council, all council, even in comments, not comment on them. Um, uh, John Dundley uh, parking at the pit and the bus. Um, this has come up before. Um, I could answer that. I'm not sure how to answer the, the bus question. Ken, have they, are they, have they gone back? Has that come up? Yeah, they, they've gone back. I've met with Jordan Sturdy twice and Modi once up at the pit, so um, I can respond to him if you'd like. Okay, sure. Um, uh, the Butterfly Way project certification, um, just a good news story. Um, congratulations to, to Val Morton and her team, Hannah and others. Um, it's, uh, for those that don't know, I think I've discussed this at council before, but it's a David Suzuki thing, and they, they got their, their core number of uh, participants to get their certification, which is great news, and um, they intend to keep expanding. So We're on the map. We're, oh, we're on the map, and we can grow, we can grow bigger. Nice, yeah. we, have a, we have a butterfly garden in my house, in my home. <laughs> um, and then, and then there was the then there was the email from um, Norma Rogers on on the finance report. Um, I, I could I could answer that without uh, being being too specific. Specific or um, did council think there's an opinion that I need to answer it with? Um, Perhaps Ross. Maybe. I could do so. 
Are you suggesting that Ross answers this one? I think part of that question was sort of directed to... The second part is, yes. Yeah. The first part is, first part is, not. is not. Yeah. The Ross part two? That was part one? Or touch touching Ross? Is that good? Yeah. Well, I can take the time to pen something that I would prefer, just that face-to-face -face conversation. Uh, Norma Rogers. Okay. I think it would be more efficient use of my time. Um, Excellent. All right. Can I reach out to her and tell her to give you a call? Please, anytime. Happy to meet anytime. Okay. Um, then there was there was a, a couple of others at the end, more, more recent uh, correspondence from uh, MP. Um, the, the one was, oh, you've got a note here, second. Didn't we deal with the LGMA last We time? did, the LGMA. Yeah, we, we voted, we directed we staff the, uh, to uh, and pursuing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a letter from Patrick. Which one was that? I'm looking at the one about accessibility fund. This is this is the one about the accessibility fund. Yeah, that, we we did address that one last, and we decided we to go for it. Okay. Same with the LG. Oh yes, okay. one. He's coming back to me. Okay, so these are these are all the ones. These have been done. Okay, all right. Sure. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, new business. Hopefully, there was any. Uh, public questions. Uh, any anyone from the gallery like to post a question? Uh, Marina, anyone online? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, motion to adjourn uh, the open portion. Yeah, we're going to on adjourn. You're going to go in. Ah, uh, we're going to recess. 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 Okay. Motion to recess. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Opposed. Yes. Okay. We'll have a uh, five minute. Uh, Break. Come back and move in the clothes. All right. Here's another That's... option. I don't know. Nobody waits around. There. Okay. No questions. So now it's no. Nope. So motion to close the meeting. Adjourned. Off, to adjourn the meeting. Still move.